everyone. Welcome to another live episode of the Outlaw Nation show here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am your host, the Outlaw John Roca. Let's see how many times I can say outlaw in a sentence. Thank you all so much for uh, joining me tonight and joining my guest tonight, which I will, who I will introduce in just a few seconds. Just want to thank you all so much for supporting the Outlaw Nation channel. We're close to crossing 14,000 subscribers, marching towards 15,000 subscribers and passing that 20,000 subscribers front. Uh, and so much has been happening here on the Outlaw Nation channel. And then for a lot of you that know, I uh, today was my last day on Schmodown backstage uh, as the co-host of the show. It was a fun, it was a fun run. It was a nice little run. Certainly uh, fun uh, and breaking down the matches and talking with Ben Bateman and going back and forth uh, and hearing all the great positive words from the fans and also hearing all the fans saying it was the Finstock Exchange Hour. You know, you deal with that. You, you can't satisfy everybody, people. That's the, that's the big lesson in life. I don't know if you've learned it yet, but you should learn it now. You're not going to satisfy everybody. So just do the best you can at what you're doing in life. Uh, and that is, that's going to bring you the satisfaction that you really need. And one of the things we're doing the best we can with is this Outlaw Nation channel for sure. We've got a bunch of new shows that just dropped. Impolite Truths uh, is a new show that started a few weeks ago. Now we're go going every Thursday night at 7 p.m. PT live to talk about what's going on in the world of politics uh, as we ramp up into the election at Oh boy, has it been getting crazy out there on both sides of the aisle. So we cover it all. Uh, we don't pick sides, but we certainly have our feelings and our opinions about things that are going on in the world. We just try to out everything that's going on so you feel informed as a voter and as a person who maybe is too busy to catch up on the political landscape. Watch our show. We'll get you as caught up as possible, uh, and we'll answer any questions you have on that show as well. Today, we dropped the Top 10 as well, a new episode of the Top 10 Show, the podcast that I do with Matt Nost. I think we just did the Top 10 comic book non-superhero comic book movies yeah very extensive title non-superhero comic book movies we counted those down as well and this morning mornings with the outlaw with alex shashak shashak and i we were talking you know her from the action army talking about all things going on in the world of entertainment very exciting stuff but that's not what you're here for tonight tonight you're here to hang out for a couple hours and get to know one of the co-hosts of one of the new shows that are happening here on the Outlaw Nation channel as well. A show I'm very proud of uh, and a show that I'm very happy to uh, be co-hosting with the young lady you're going to be meeting here in just a second. She is the co- She's also uh, the co-host of another uh, Star Wars show that is a podcast. It's called Force Toast. She does it with her friend Alice. She is originally from Kansas. She now calls Chicago home and defiantly calls Chicago home and proudly call Chicago home. You know her as uh, one of the best Star Wars competitors we've seen over the last two years. Certainly someone that people believe will be holding that Star Wars belt in the Schmodown sometime next year after having a really good showing in the tournament. Hey, if you beat if you play the eventual winner of the tournament and you only lose by missing one question, you got to give a lot of props to the person who is that competitor. And certainly many, many people have been doing that. And I'm excited to welcome her to the show. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome the great Laura Kelly. Laura, how are you? How are things? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to everyone at the Outlaw Nation who's been so welcoming since we launched the Jedi Way. This has been like an amazing welcome. Yeah, the Jedi Way has been re doing really, really well, and people have been so excited about it. And, you know, we're, we're kind of feeling feeling our way a little bit about what stuff we should cover as separate videos, what stuff uh, overall we should cover uh, about the franchise itself on the main show. So it's been fun to kind of explore that. Hey, look, I know I didn't need another show, but I know I needed a show about <laughs> Star Wars. And I and I was very happy that you said yes. We've been having a good time on the show for real. Um, how is your day going? Like, what is going on in your world? What is the typical world for you going on today? Uh, has it been crazy? Have you just been working? Or has there been more going on in your world with the Mandalorian trailer dropping this morning? The Mandalorian was certainly a distraction from work today, um, which was <laughs> not great because it's a busy time. But that's OK. Um, I So... I work for a private financial firm down in the down in the loop here in Chicago. We've all been working from home since March. Um, so that's been an interesting adventure, but I'm very much like set up and good to go. I've got a good setup here at home. I've got like a standing desk that can like crank it and it goes up and down. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, it works out real well because I just started seeing, I went today for the first time to go see my chiropractor or a new chiropractor. Oh. I haven't been to like any chiropractic appointments since like March and my posture, you can see it every time wow. I talk to anyone because I just am hunched over. So it's, it, this is, I'm in a good spot. I'm feeling really good today. I like went out okay. and saw other humans, even wow. if it was just a bunch of doctors, like it was, <laughs> it was great. 
<laughs> is this something that you've struggled with in your life? Because you're, you're you're a tall uh, woman. Is this something you've struggled with? It kind of, is it a is it a, a you know a, a thing with your back, or is it you know you've just kind of struggled with your have been self conscious about your height, so you found yourself hunching over, so people don't feel threatened by you? Like, what is the issue with the back? Yeah, no, it's definitely like, I mean, it's definitely been a self-conscious thing. I mean, like I've been, oh. I'm six feet tall now. I've been six feet tall since I was like 12 or 13 years old. Oh, wow. Not so, not so great back then. Okay. Uh, wasn't my favorite thing. So I, you know, I've okay. had like, now it's been 32 years of me slumping over. Um, and you know, my parents, like they put me for like a summer, they put me in like a horseback riding camp. And they were like, oh, maybe this will like help fix her posture. She'll like learn to like sit up straight while she's riding a horse. Right. Um, which I, I learned, I ended up just like getting really into riding horses and being a really expensive child and like not really getting anything posture wise out of it. So now <laughs> it just costs me a fortune in chiropractic care, uh, oh, which is fine, wow. but it, it does help. And it sucks that I haven't been in so long. Um, but it was really nice. You know, I got my, like my little homework that I have to do and it's, yeah, I'm back at it. It's nice. Cause I'm now I'm going like two or three times a week back oh, to wow. this location because they're finally open again and right. hopefully getting back into the swing of it. And hopefully you all will notice that my posture will eventually improve as the show oh. goes on. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Do you, do you, uh, do you work out to uh, like, do you have to do certain workouts or do you have to do certain like uh, weight lifting things for it? Or is it just a matter of like, just making sure you have the right technique, the right posture when you're doing anything? You know, it's a lot of like a lot of the resistance band training. Oh, I've got resistance okay. bands like all over the place in this apartment. They're like hanging right. on every doorknob. Um, I need to start using them more often. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's a lot of like it's a lot of just like stretching. And I used to be I used to be into yoga and I used to go to yoga oh, like yeah. three, four times a week. And I've fully fallen off the wagon with that. I mean, like I remember at the beginning of the quarantine, I was like, I'm gonna use this opportunity, I'm gonna stay in shape. I'm going to do these at home workouts oh, like, yeah. on Instagram live and stuff. And I was all and that lasted like two months and now I'm just like fully off the wagon. So yeah. I'm trying to get back on, but it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Laura, I feel you. I feel you. I, I, I made, uh, I made us drive out to way deep into the Valley to buy these $300 pair of weights. Uh, whenever the, the uh, Bowflex <laughs> ones that they were I, like, I was like, I'm going to work out. And uh, my girlfriend was just like, if we're driving this for you better work to have and touched them in two months, they just oh, been sitting no. there haunting me. <laughs> and we're about to, we're about, we're looking at making a move here to a new place. And uh, we're getting out of LA. Uh, if things work out, we'll be in San Diego uh, in a place. And it's a, a, a lot more space. So I've convinced myself that now I have the space to work out and not have to have any issues. And I hope it happens because uh, there's nothing worse than putting on 10 pounds while you're uh, sitting on your butt all day doing shows. It really shows. It really, you can feel it when you're doing the show. So I get it completely. Oh, yeah. You uh, go back and like watch older episodes or like see a clip of them and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when I won the title the first time when I beat Dan, I was at, I think I was 210 pounds or 205 pounds. I look good. I look good, son. And then, <laughs> but since then, you know, life and everything has gotten in the way and I'm back to the extra large shirts to cover up everything. So that's life. That's life. Are Indeed. you a bitch or do you, do you struggle with your weight? Do you fight? Like, do you, uh, is that something that you're concerned about or is really your back that, that like conducts whether you gain weight or not? No, you know, my back is usually, back when I was doing yoga, it was in really good shape, but you know, I'm still prone to like throwing out my neck, throwing out my back, like every now and then, oh, wow. like that would happen like once a year or something. Right. My neck, my, now my neck, like I'll throw it out like once every couple months. Like it's a lot. You <laughs> notice when you don't like, or when you're not in the gym as often, how your body just starts to deteriorate on its oh, own. Oh yeah. It's not oh, great. Yeah. Um, but no, I was, let me think. I, I was, it was like my late, probably my early twenties, I got really yeah. into like fitness for a little while. Like I took this fitness class at like a community college and I got like right. really enthusiastic about it. Um, and like part of my motivation, I remember was right after the Dark Knight Rises came out and I saw Anne Hathaway's costume and I was like, <laughs> I want to wear that. I want to wear that costume on Halloween and I'm going to do it. And so I like worked out really hard and found the costume and wore it on Halloween and it looked amazing and I was so oh. pumped about it. And then like for a while, I was really good about like I would kind of change up my fitness routine, try something new. Right. Um, and then when I moved here, it kind of became all about yoga. And then it was all about hot yoga, which is really fun. Oh, um, I love it. I did hot yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's an amazing way to like stay in shape and to, you know, stay flexible and things like that. And it, yeah. it's, you know, 
ever since the pandemic hit and it just you know you fall off the wagon and you can't i just can't fathom going back like the yoga studios are back open (laughs) they're doing the hot yoga inside and i'm just like no matter how much distance is between me and the next person on the next mat i'm just like that is gross i just i can't imagine (laughs) we were already consuming each other's sweat and hot yoga to add the coronavirus possibility to it makes no sense to put yourself through it. I, I've seen, I've driven around and seen like gyms that are outdoors, like these gyms having classes on like these, those green AstroTurf mats. Yep. And I'm like, I don't know what you're getting out of that. I don't know what you're getting out of that. <laughs> that seems dangerous to me. It seems like you're going to skin a knee or twist an ankle. And it makes no sense to me, but people need to work out, I guess. They I know great. you do what you can. And I wonder yeah. what people like out on the West coast are doing when you're dealing with fires and the air quality oh, yeah. is so bad. I'm like, you can't even do that. Like, what are you, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Just right, right. stand in front of an air purifier and do jumping jacks. I think that's their only <laughs> option. <laughs> like, I like that option. That's a good option. That's, that's, yeah. I think about that. Uh, we've got a couple of super chats that have rolled through here. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the super chats and the stream labs are open. Show Laura some love. Show us some love. Send in your questions. Send in your thoughts and uh, about everything going on. We are going to get into some Star Wars stuff. We are going to get into the Schmodown stuff, get our thoughts on everything that's going on, and uh, get to know Laura a little bit more as well. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is because we started Jedi Way, and I wanted to uh, introduce some of you all who are who are maybe not watching the show yet Get to know Laura Kelly, and maybe that'll influence you to come over and watch Jedi Way with us here uh, when we do it on the channel. Uh, let's see. A- Hobbit F. Andy says, uh, yes, Laura is the best. <laughs> All right, there we go. Andy's huh. the best. Yay. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then what else we got? Oh, Cameron Hainsworth. Uh, oh, thank you, Cameron. He's like, just because I love you, my brother, and Laura is a beautiful addition to the Outlaw Network, the Jedi Way, all day. Well, there you go. Nice. Very kind compliment. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, let's see. Oh, and 156 Impulse. Hey, good to see you, man. Hola. Oh, my God. Laura, huge fan. Hugs. John, today is Guatemala Independence Day. Respect. Viva Guatemala. And the Mandalorian trailer is amazing. This is the way. Uh, yeah. Um, did you know it was Guatemala Independence Day, Laura? Did you I was not account? aware, but sending um, virtual hugs your way at 156 Impulse. Yay. <laughs> hugs to your mom as well, 156. I hope she's doing better. Uh, and I hope you figured out what that rash was on your arm, son. I hope you went to the doctor and figured out if it wasn't COVID. You know, rash happens with COVID. So I hope. Okay, keep me updated. You don't, have to, you don't have to send in more money. Just keep me updated if you're okay. Uh, we do have some a couple of stream that rolled through here. Michael Nip says, uh, Laura, is there a Star Wars character that is that has traits that embody what you like to strive towards in your life? Can you describe what traits that character has that you like ooh, strong question right off the bat oh All right. my god that's an amazing question <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not even sure how to answer it i mean like i think the first the character that comes to mind like i so admire like the wisdom that we got out of um ahsoka she has this like oh, yeah. quiet calmness to her in rebels that i just admire so much and i wish like that's i'm like i can only aspire to ever be like that calm and chill of a person but also that wise and also that good at combat not that i ever really need to be good at combat for any reason i don't think i'm not like in yeah i don't know so i (laughs) i she's one of those characters that just like embodies the all that is good and all that i admire and you know she was the one that we that always saw from the beginning that like there was something wrong when you know, mm. the Jedi were digging more and more into the war and she seemed to be kind of resistant to that and resistant yeah. to the paths they were going down. And I like to think that I would be the person that would have been, that would have seen that coming to and would have been wise enough to kind of make the decision to walk away. I probably wouldn't have, but I certainly admire uh, her strength and her gumption that she brings to Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look, uh, I, I just from uh, having known you a short while, I know you're not a one to not uh, uh, protest uh, for things that you believe in and not uh, stand up for stuff, uh, not post about stuff that you believe in. So uh, I could see you uh, absolutely being so- Ahsoka. I could see you being Fulcrum. I could see you doing stuff behind the scenes uh, in uh, s- secretive ways for the for the good guys, for the rebels. So uh, I think Ahsoka makes a lot of sense, to be honest with you. Thank oh, you. Honestly, yeah. I appreciate that. I sometimes feel like my Twitter feed is like recently, especially just become a space for me to like call out people on bullshit. And I'm like, that's (laughs) that's all well and good. But I'm a little bit like, is it becoming like a negative space? Like, I don't want my feed to be that. So like, I feel like lately I've been trying to like back away from that a little bit. But then something shitty happens and I'm just like, okay, 
come on. Like now I have to say something. I'm like, you all are bringing this on yourselves. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing a little research on you because, you know, I, I don't know Laura that well. I've gotten to know her uh, as we've done the show a little bit. So I'm just doing a little bit of mini research because Laura's not the kind of person that has like multiple interviews out there and, and what have you. So you got to do a little. And I saw your mom is a very big supporter of you and the things that you do <laughs> and the stuff you protest and all of that. She's a very, very big fan of what the things that you're doing. Yes, yeah, she is very supportive. And my mom is great. She's not like she's not a big like nerd. Like she's not yeah. a. I don't know if she's ever seen a Star Wars film. She probably hasn't. But one of my favorite things uh, that has happened recently is like last August, uh, my sister and I flew my mom out to San Francisco and we did like a big wine country trip for her 60th oh, nice. birthday. And my mom showed up like off the plane and had um, like a Star Wars shirt on, which I just love because I'm just like, she's not wearing it because she like loves Star Wars. She's never seen a Star Wars movie. She's probably never right. even watched The Mandalorian. She's just wearing it to like, Cause it's like my team. Like if I, play, like if I play for a sports team, like she would just show up in my Jersey. That's like my Jersey. And that's just how like she supports me in that way. And I, I just thought that was really funny and really cute. That is <laughs> sweet. That's sweet. And so you don't get pushback from your mom. Cause I mean, you're doing uh, stuff already that is in the financial world. That probably is a lot more lucrative than the stuff you're doing to, as you, as you're doing the star Wars stuff. Uh, but your mom doesn't stop you. Your mom doesn't say it's ridiculous. Don't waste your time doing that. She's very supportive of this, of this kind of your family. Uh, would you say overall very supportive of the the um, uh, path you're pursuing with the Star Wars stuff? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, my brothers played like sports growing up, so I've kind of talked a little bit about how I was like I was a little bit of an anomaly for my parents because I'm they were like you kind of look like you should be an athlete, but you're really not. So we're not totally sure what to do with you. But you know they. Right. I've, I've found ways around it and they've found ways to be, um, supportive. And yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. I mean, my, my youngest brother lives in San Diego. So if you go, if you ever, when you do get down there, I'll have to hook you guys okay. up, but yeah, he's a good guy. And yeah, he like, he listens to my show regularly and texts me oh, cool. about it. And he's just like, I just like listening to it in the car. Cause I feel like you're with me in the car and we're just driving around San Diego. I'm like, Oh, that's really <laughs> sweet. Um, I'm getting the, uh, Sean, am I still pixelated? I'm getting the news that I'm pixelated. Will you nod your head a little bit? Okay. A little bit. All right. Let me see if it, if it doesn't clear up again, I'll pull myself out and come back in. So, uh, F James 72 says I'm watching the playoffs and listening to you too. I love your work ethic, Roka making your own network. Yeah. I'm, you know, uh, I appreciate you watching the playoffs. I'll be watching some of that uh, for game time. Listen, <laughs> if I had my way and I was making enough, I mean, this is all I would do. And when we move down to the place they're moving down to at some point, if we, if we close the deal on it, the studio is bigger than the one I have now. This is like a mini, uh, mini studio, mini, it's like a half a bedroom, but the bigger one, and I'll be able to do more content, uh, be able to do more like sports updates, like 10 minute videos, 15 minute videos. That's the goal just to keep working at this stuff and eventually build it up and then eventually start a website and hire some writers or get some writers who are willing to do work pro bono till we get sponsors and then be able to pay them out of that. So I have my ideas of where I want it to go. Uh, so running my own thing has been nice. It's been nice to get the, uh, I don't know, the shackles off of you and be able to do your own thing without having to stand in line behind somebody, without having to ask your boss if you can do this. And if you're, if you, or if the, uh, or if the main critic has to do it, like it's all that kind of stuff. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So it's nice. It's nice. Um, but I do miss the paycheck. I'm not going to lie. Uh, all right. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, let's see if we got any more Streamlabs rolled. Yeah, a couple more here. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Ace Money says, hey, Outlaw, I just jumped into the stream. Laura says she is six feet tall. Did she ever do any modeling work? There we go. Great addition to the Outlaw Nation and the Schmodown. Keep up all the great work. Yeah, I, I don't think that's an out of bounds question necessarily, Laura. Did you do any modeling work as you, as you were younger when you were taller, like for anything like that? Did you get courted for any of that stuff? I am extremely flattered by the question. <laughs> I really, really am. That really means a lot, especially as I'm just like sitting here bitching about how I haven't worked out in three months. Um, <laughs> that that really does mean a lot. Um, no, I did not ever do any modeling. Not something I ever pursued. Um, okay. Un unfortunately, would have been nice, I guess, if I had. Maybe I would have gotten some money out of that. But uh, yeah, no, that was not anything I ever a path I'd never went down. Maybe with her universe down the road, you'll be able to do, you know, they have that uh, runway show 
that they do with uh, Ashley Eckstein. And uh, I know Wendy Lee's walked down it. So who knows? Maybe down the road, that's a possibility. I tried uh, to go to the, I wanted to attend that fashion show at Comic-Con yeah. when I was there. What was that? It must have been 2019. Yeah. And uh, that, man, that show, like, it was a mess. It was not, it was, I'm sure it was, it went over really well, but the line, yeah. the way that oh, it yeah. snaked around the entire level of the, the hotel that we were on, I was just like, oh, this isn't going to happen. So I've never even gotten to attend. I would actually love to be able to <laughs> just attend that show. <laughs> well, I have a feeling as you grow in your Star Wars, uh, uh, as people get to know you more for your Star Wars stuff, that will maybe come into play for sure. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah. One fifty six impulse says I'm doing great, bro. The doctor said it wasn't COVID. Thank God. Question for Laura. What Star Wars quote do you use for everyday life? Yeah, Star Wars. Uh, Laura, do you have a Star Wars quote that you use in your everyday life? Mm, hello, there's a common one that comes up. <laughs> that one. That one's fairly easy. Um, and it's fun because you can use it subtly. Um, yeah. When you, uh, when you, in, if you encounter other Star Wars fans, they tend to respond uh, in the correct way. And that's really rare. So it's always fun when you get to use that. But um, I mean, when it, when it comes to like, things that more inspire me um yeah. i think a lot about like a lot of the things that yoda said in the last jedi uh when it comes to like failure and talking about the relationship between a, a mentor and a master right. um as someone who i have in my my day job i have a direct report and that wasn't anything that i ever asked for <laughs> yeah um it wasn't anything i ever aspired to and i still like question all the time if i'm making the right decisions and doing right by this person that depends on me and that i'm supposed uh -huh. to be managing um so i oh. think a lot about like those you know the things that yoda said were you know it is okay to fail it is okay to mess up now and then as long as you learn from it um yeah and yeah and that they that person you know we are what they grow beyond that's one of my one of the things i try to keep in mind is that you know if i ever get hit by the proverbial bus that there's someone there that can take over for me <laughs> wow jeez laura <laughs> all right respect uh let's see daniel haygood donated he said lived in chicago two years now while in law school and have come to love this city for all its flaws and beauty hope the mts returns when it's allowed to laura what is your favorite nerdy convention type thing you've been to here in chicago Mm, you know, I've only really, I haven't done a ton of the big conventions. So I've been to uh, two Chicago, I've been to two Star Wars celebrations, and I mm -hmm. think I've been to two or three um, C2E2 is the Chicago Entertainment expo something or other i don't know yeah um but it's it's a great convention it's super fun every year it's huge i mean the amount of space that they they take up an entirely different wing of mccormick place that star wars celebration did um yeah star wars celebration i think was actually in a much more sort of like modernized area maybe not right. but i think it's an it was a newer wing of mccormick place right. um but c2e2 is there every year and it's there's not ever like a ton of star wars stuff that's there Right. But there's always a ton of Star Wars cosplayers and there's always a ton of Star Wars art and toys and collectibles and things like that that you can that you can browse on the floor. So oh, it's cool. always a really, really fun time. Um, yeah. But I, as far as conventions go, Star Wars Celebration is by far my favorite. It was really nice to be in my own city for it and to be yeah. able to like, I mean, we had tons of people coming to me and Alice all the time being like, where should I go to eat? Where should I stay? Where should I? <laughs> what should I avoid? Things like that. It was really fun for me to get to be like, a point of contact for people and to provide that kind of information. I was really happy to do that. And we right. did like entire episodes on it. And we got a lot of feedback wow. of people just being like, thank you so much for doing this. Like, this is a huge help. Right. Um, and it was just great. So that was as far as like nerdy convention type of stuff goes, like having Chicago celebration here was really, really amazing. Yeah, that was a great experience. I mean, we were there that weekend. Matt Nost and I were for the live top 10 show. So we thought we'd like, you know, since the Schmodown was going down and Christian and all them were going down, we thought it'd be a, a good time to do a live show there in Chicago. And we did it at a place called Reggie's, uh, which uh, was an uncomfortable club to be in. For, I mean, 666 upside down crosses. It was a very uncomfortable uh, club to be in. But we had a great time doing two shows back to back. Uh, I got introduced to Chicago's uh, favorite drink of Malort, uh, which I, uh, oh, Laura, have you had some Malort, Laura Kelly? Oh, I have been indoctrinated into, uh, <laughs> with Malort. It's, um, it's certainly something. Yeah. It's like if you made a liqueur out of burnt hair, that's, <laughs> that's the best way that I can kind of, it's pretty, it's really vile. It it's really vile. bad. I'm so sorry, but I'm also glad that you, you know, you are one of us. 
John, yeah. welcome to the club. <laughs> I felt like, yeah, I felt really welcomed by everybody there. I had drank two of them. Uh, so I was like, cause I was like, you know, I'll never resist a dare if I can, if I can handle it. And I was like, yeah, let's try it. Why not? But yeah, you're right. A couple of terrible, terrible drinks. Uh, but overall though, I really enjoyed, uh, uh Chicago. We, I got a hotel right by the pier, the Navy pier. So I was, and it was overcast. If you remember through celebration, it was overcast for the most part, but being able to sit, uh, at a, a high level at, and look out the window and just enjoy because I like overcast days. I'm not a big fan of sunny days. I like overcast days. So being able to sit out and look at the water and and everything like that and really kind of enjoy Chicago in, in that atmosphere, I had a really great time. I really enjoyed that. Went down and got some donuts from a – I can't remember the place. It was cool-ass donuts, interesting Ooh. new ways right around Fine. that area. Yeah, so it was it was a good time, Chicago. And uh, back in 94, I went there for the World Cup, the opening game of the World Cup. I was there in Soldier Field with my dad and stuff because our country, my dad's country, Bolivia – was playing so i mean i've had nothing but fun experiences in chicago and i hope one day to go for like a week and just really go to the art stuff and you see the see all the things that, and try some of the delicacies there some of the restaurants there in chicago and just kind of have a good time so maybe down the road laura and i'll come to you for advice and suggestions on places to go for sure so please maybe. do i am your girl for rec restaurant recommendations i am totally <laughs> here for it or at least i will be once everything opens back up and oh, I can right. take I can take stock of what is closed for good, which I imagine it's it's quite a lot of of yeah. really good places, which is too bad. Yeah, it is a shame. Have you have you like um have you been uh monitoring everything that's happening in the city and just seeing some of the uh, places that you know well just kind of uh, sadly going down to the COVID situation, or has has it not hit the city quite as hard as other cities? Um, you know, I honestly, I've been following it closely enough that I don't really know how it's been affecting okay. other cities in terms of restaurant closures. But in okay. Chicago, we have we have lost a few really good spots, which is really unfortunate. Oh. Um, and, you know, it tends to be the sort of smaller family owned places yeah. um, that really just can't keep their head above water in this situation, which you can really you can't blame them. Right. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it honestly, I think most of the places that I'm really into have stayed open and have been doing like to go things. Right. Um, so I, I feel pretty lucky in that respect, but yeah, no, I try to stay on top of it. Um, just because, you know, I live actually, I do live in the city. My office mm. is in the city. Um, I have to kind of keep track of what's happening in the, um, you know, in the ongoings of what's happening right. around our office so that I can communicate that to the rest of our staff. But it's, right um, it's been, yeah, it's been interesting to watch it play out here. And anytime I have to go downtown, which I do have to make trips down there every now and then it's, yeah. It's so weird. It will never stop being weird seeing Chicago like a ghost town. When yeah, I'm, right? I'm just, I can't imagine ever getting used to it. It's just so weird. It's weird because I'm happy it's kind of in LA. I'm not happy that restaurants are closed because most for the most part, I see restaurants open. I see outdoor dining almost everywhere uh, and people not practicing social distancing without their masks. Don't be confused, people. Liberals don't wear masks either. Don't, yeah. don't get it confused. It's in all areas of the country that people are being stupidly defiant about it and and it's causing these uh, uh upticks and it's one of the reasons why we can't do much in LA like go to movies but you can in San Diego you can in other cities but you can't in LA but um it's nice to not have to worry about traffic so much whenever you leave the house or drive around to go do something or get on the highway like we've gotten up and down to San Diego in about 2 hours and 10 minutes which is unheard of uh nowadays with all the traffic there so it's nice in that way but it's sad um to see some of the uh, other stuff that are happening other places Places that are closing, uh, unfortunately, That's, you know, and, and hopefully we'll be getting out of it at some point. We shall see. Um, let's see. FJM72 says you already have 350 shows and you want to add more content. <laughs> you know what? I don't have 350 shows. I don't have 350 shows. I don't know where this comes from. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest has way more shows than I do, for God's sakes. Uh, Muckbang Review says, Laura, sorry if I missed it, but what were your thoughts on the Madeline Orient season true trailer? Thanks so much for broadcasting. All right, let's get into it. We waited half an hour. Let's do this thing. Uh, Muckbang Reviews asking you, what were your thoughts on the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer? This came completely out of the blue lore. It had been rumored to be dropped about a week or two ago. Star Wars fans were mad and up in arms about it not being dropped. And then, boom, uh, it was surprisingly dropped this morning. Um, and you and I have had our conversations about coincidental timing of certain things. So, <laughs> so... What was your feeling about this trailer overall? Uh, what really stood out for you? And, and did you like it? Um, first of all, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm really happy that we finally got it. Um, yeah. I, I noticed 
early this morning that a couple people had posted on Twitter, like, oh, there's a private video showing up in the Star Wars feed, which is what they used to do before they would drop Rebels trailers. Um, and that I was paying a lot more attention back then because I was just waiting on, you know, waiting for any hint that I could get of what was to come in coming episodes back when Rebels was airing. And right. uh, so that was really exciting. I, I, I kind of figured at that point that it was coming. Um, and, and then it dropped and I don't think I was notified for like 15 minutes or something because I was already <laughs> at the, you know, early beginnings of my work day. Right. Um, and I... I have to say, I really enjoyed the trailer. I mm. think that it was really, really well done. I am super happy that they didn't give really anything away. I mean, yeah. there was there. We don't really have much idea of what's going to be going on plot wise, um, just from the trailer alone. Um, it's really more of like this is how season two is going to feel. Um, yeah. We're just going to give you Star Wars feels. We're going to throw some X wings in there. It's going to be awesome. Um, and I was, we, we talked about this on, on Force Toast, Alice mm -hmm. and I, about like kind of what things we kind of were hoping that they would not show in the trailer because we just didn't want them to be spoiled in that way. Mm -hmm. um, seeing Ahsoka is one of them. We, I, I was very much in the team of, I do not want to see that in this trailer. Mm -hmm. I want to be the, watching the show. I want to be surprised um, when, I, when we actually see it, if that is something that in fact happens that we do see in... Um, in season two, it seems at this point that that's pretty much been revealed that it's coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I just, I didn't want to see it in the trailer. So I was really excited that they held back that they held back Bo-Katan, they held back um, anything with Tamara Morrison, if he's actually yeah. going to be in season two. Um, right. Yeah. I'm excited to just like kind of be surprised and to actually get to experience it once the show comes out. Yeah. I'm with you there. I, I, I absolutely loved the trailer. I watched it like four times this morning before we did Mornings with the Allo. So I could like, you know, because sometimes you watch it the first time, you're just like, ah! and the second time, maybe like, okay, okay, what am I seeing? Third time, all right, what am I catching? And the fourth time, okay, I'm just going to enjoy it, you know? And so seeing all the different uh, situations, and my friend was already giving me sh uh, shit for saying that ice. Uh, planet was Hoth. He's like, you think everything is Hoth? And I'm like, I just love Hoth. What can I tell you? So a lot of people <laughs> are saying that might be uh, Elam uh, that would become Star Killer Base. So there's a lot of that kind of conversation going on. Um, I saw uh, something on Reddit that the rumors that we could get a Skywalker appearance, a Luke Skywalker appearance is now possibly in play. I just like the way it started out with the armor, hearing her voice talking to him about having to bring Yoda back to. I mean, that was the way you start. You have to bring Baby Yoda back to Baby Yoda's people. You're like, wait, there's Yoda people? What are we talking about? So right in that moment, you're like, okay, so this is going to keep me sustained throughout the season. And they, we probably won't see the Yoda people maybe till the last episode possibly, but either way, it's awesome that you know he's on this journey. And we're seeing both the space and kind of the earthbound uh, journey that he's going to be on with uh, the child, a.k.a. Baby Yoda, both in space, as you mentioned, with the X-Wing fighters. Then we see him down like in a boat, going on a boat somewhere, which which is awesome. Uh, and then we have the shots of Sasha Banks. I don't know what Sasha Banks is playing. I don't know. Because I thought it was Ahsoka at first. I thought it was Rosario Dawson. But then, of course, the second time around, it's definitely Sasha Banks. So what is she playing? And they say Jedi sorcerers so is a, or you know, evil sorcerer or whatever. So Jedi versus Mandalore. What is that going to entail? So there's so much that they just kind of laid out. Though you're right. They didn't give you much plot. But they gave you little snippets to get you excited for what's to come. And I agree with you. I'm glad they didn't show anything of Ahsoka or Cobb Vanth or uh, Boba or Rex or anything like that. Uh, and we just got to enjoy, or Bo Katan, we just got to enjoy coming back to this because I don't think they need to show any of it until the show debuts. Because who's who's on the fence about this? You know what I'm saying? It needs to see Ahsoka Tano. I doubt there's anybody who's on the fence about this show. Yeah, no, I think everybody's everybody's on board with it. We're all, we're all here for it. Even non Star Wars fans, like I, I've talked about how like I don't have a lot of like Star Wars fans in my immediate family, but at like Christmas and Thanksgiving, like we were all watching The Mandalorian together. Awesome. Like despite the fact that none of them care. I mean, my sister is like could not give two shits about anything Star Wars related. <laughs> but the minute I saw the trailer, I was just like, oh my god, Rose! And she's like, ah, is that what you were squealing about in the other room? And I was like, yes, it was. The baby is all over the trailer, and he's still cute. Uh, new splash. And it was, yeah, it was amazing. So I was, I'm very excited. I was really pleased with the trailer. I'm really excited to see where they take this season. Yeah. Though I have to say, I would be willing to bet that we're not actually going to find the yoda planet with all At the all. yoda people i'm mm -hmm. like i have a feeling that the way that they're going to play this is that they're going to be like other big 
um, like story components that come into play that okay. become like the sort of distraction right. and are going to take us into a totally different direction. And then maybe in season three, they're going to be like, oh, hey, remember how we're we supposed to like bring the baby back to his people? Like we should probably get on that. Like we'll still revisit <laughs> it later. But I'm just like, I'm not ready for that baby to be gone off the show. I'm like that you oh, cannot God. lose baby Yoda. On, you need to do whatever you can to keep him in the show and to keep him on screen. Not all the time, but just enough so that every time I see him, I can just be like, oh, without having to miss any like plot points, which is how, exactly how it, it goes. <laughs> uh, am I wrong? Some people are pointing out to me that uh, Baby Yoda tries to speak or tries to say something to the Mandalorian. Did you catch that in the trailer? I did not, but I okay. would... I would be totally down for that. I would yeah. hope that they would be smart enough to like hold back on that and like slide yeah. it in right towards the end where he just like says his first word or something. Right. And then we're all like, <laughs> 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 I'm excited. What language? I wonder would he speak because obviously he has been raised by his own kind or we don't know how long. I mean, he's 50 years old, right? So we don't know. Was he raised by his own kind up to this age? He's essentially a baby. So will he speak English like the Mandalorian or will he speak another language that he's been raised with or does he have an intrinsic understanding of the language because of you know i don't know having grown up for 50 years with uh possibly the other baby yoda people or be he was born in the lab wasn't he kind of created in the lab or taken in the lab what was that what was is there something like that with him i'm not sure if they've explored it or if we know mm. it'd be i'd be curious to find out but yeah at the moment yeah. i think that I, I, I really enjoyed, I have to say, the Entertainment Weekly coverage that they did oh, on yeah. Mandalorian. They yeah. kind of did like the first look and they talked. To, I remember mm -hmm. John Favreau in that article sort of compared it to Game of Thrones. He's like, we're going to make this universe a little bigger. We're going to find some other characters to follow. We're going to follow their story from here yeah. um, and kind of see where it goes. And I'm, I'm happy that they're going to be making the universe bigger, although it does look like we're going to be going to some familiar planets yes. in season two. And I'm kind of in the part of the, you know, that's great that they're going to bring in planets, especially if you're bringing in something like Ilum from the Clone Wars and from Jedi Fallen Order. Um, but like, I've had it personally. I've had enough of sand planets. That's just me. I understand <laughs> why they keep using them. I get why we keep going back to it. I get why people have this attraction to Tatooine. Um, I would personally love to sort of move on from that. Um, yeah. But if we are going to go back to Tatooine, I would really love to see Amy Sedaris's character back again. That's all I'm gonna no, say. This, this is great. I love this because a lot of people, and please, if people you send in your stream lab, send in your super chats. We'll get to them. Let us know what you thought about the trailer. We'll answer them as we go along here. But I love that you said this about Amy Sedaris because so many people came after Amy Sedaris for her being in that episode. I didn't mind her. I liked her in the episode, but a lot of people didn't. I didn't like Bill Burr in his episode, but people defended that as well. So the, some people hated amy sedaris but loved bill burr and then other people hated bill burr and loved amy sedaris uh and then i think everybody universally didn't like kind of out and that's in that episode but so what was your what's your feeling why was why did you like the amy sedaris character did you like the bill burr character uh bill burr was a little bit obnoxious for me to be honest but i i didn't it didn't bother it's not like i'm not ever going to go back and watch that episode i think the music is the strongest in that episode weirdly oh, yeah. enough so i love going back and watching that um and it's always really fun seeing like Dave Filoni on camera at the end of that episode too. It's just, it's a solid one. Um, but yeah, Amy Sedaris, I, I just think she's so funny. Like my, my, I guess what I know Amy Sedaris from is number one, her character from Sex and the City and number two, her oh, character yeah. from Broad City. Um, and I'm a huge fan of her brother's books. So it was just, I just thought that was super fun to get to see Amy Sedaris in Star Wars. It's just a weird sentence to say out loud that Amy <laughs> Sedaris was in Star Wars. It just, it's great. It's <laughs> have you have you watched her new show, that cooking show she has or whatever on uh, no. True, True TV? Yeah, I have never watched that. I did used to Which watch Stranger Which is weird Things. because I love cooking shows, but I didn't even know that she had a cooking show. You said, True TV, that's an unusual one. I may not yeah. have that channel. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, all right, so let's see. We got some more here. Uh, Samara Tesfai says, speaking of liquors, what kind of drinks would Mando order at the cantina for himself and Baby Yoda? <laughs> also, that trailer was everything. Uh, yeah, what do you got there, Laura? What do you think the uh, baby man? I mean, uh, Mando and uh, Baby Yoda would drink at the cantina. <laughs> uh, I don't know about Baby Yoda. I would hesitate to give him anything. But Mando's—he strikes me as a beer guy. He strikes me as like not like, and I'm not talking like craft beer, fancy yeah. like microbrewery. I'm talking like. Homeboy wants like the cheapest lager you got and he will <laughs> drink it and he doesn't care what it tastes like. He's just like, give me the Bud Light. It's fine. <laughs> 
I like that. I like that. Uh, let's see. Someone trying to school me here. I think it's F James 72. Yeah, F James 72 said, Roke, it's not English. It's basic. You're going to need to add a few weeks to study. LOL. <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> He's fine. not wrong. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I don't mind being corrected. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Uh, ben Rainer says, blue milk, the easy answer. Uh, J. Scott Real says, ice house. <laughs> ice house, nice. Uh, space logger, no. Come on, guys. You got to do better with these jokes, for God's sakes. Um, all right, where are we at with these? Uh, oh, yeah, let me get some more uh, Streamlabs here. Ben Rayner said, uh, hey, Roke and Laura. Laura, welcome to the Outlaw Nation. Um, don't really have a question, so I'll ask the easy question of the OT, which uh, of the original trilogy, which is your favorite movie? Thanks again, Roka, for bringing all the content. Hit that like button, people. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Uh, we have over 145 of y'all watching us live, so please hit that like button as well. Get us over 100 likes. We're at 89 likes right now. If you don't mind, swing that uh, uh, cursor over there and hit that thumbs up button. Move your mouse over about a, a few inches and hit that like up, uh, hit that a thumbs up button. Give us a like here on the show. And if you happen to be watching uh, us later, and some of you do watch us later and not live, leave a comment as well and hit that like button. The more comments, the more likes you leave, it elevates the visibility of the show on the Outlaw. I'm sorry, on the uh, YouTube uh, algorithm and gets people aboard the Outlaw Nation train for sure. So thank you for that. So back to that question there, Laura. Um, let me see here if I read it again. Uh, you know, what's your what's your favorite movie of the original trilogy? What, what's your answer to that? I'm a Return of the Jedi girl. I'm all about oh, like wow. the, I love the Ewoks. I'm all about like the badass Luke Skywalker that we get. I love. I'm a sucker for a resolution. So the fact that it was the last movie in the trilogy is kind of a, it's a, that was a sort of given for me. Um, right. But I, right. I really enjoyed it overall. That was, that's probably my favorite of the trilogy. I'm curious to hear yours though, John. Mine? I, I mean, I'm boring. I, you know, mine is uh, strikes back. That's I yeah. like, I like sad endings. I like tragic endings in movies. I'm a big fan of that. So that's why I like a, a, a Empire Strikes Back as much. It's not because, you know, it's necessarily the best of the three. It's just, there's something about, that film that takes you on a number of uh, journeys and twists and turns the training thing with uh with luke i mean that's samurai stuff exactly what lucas was influenced by uh um to a degree in creating this whole um uh, uh trilogy right uh, initially the kurosawa stuff really influenced what he was doing the wipes all of that is there but also the samurai aspect of it all certainly the training the fact that it leaves before the training is done that's an unusual thing you usually don't see that in movies so that was kind of a swerve uh with it and then having him uh find out about his dad that's massive uh and at the whole time and then throughout the whole time you have this relationship between uh, luke i'm sorry between leia and han become stronger and stronger and i remember being in my 20s it was nice to have those beatrice beatrice and benedict back and forth with somebody who could who could hang with you and uh, flirt at the same time as you're making fun of each other i mean it was great so to see that kind of play out the way it does in the film i, I love that all around and i think it's the best written one of the three, in my opinion, as well. So uh, that's, that's my answer. And I don't like the Ewoks, so that's my problem. <laughs> Should have been their own. Yeah, should have been Chewy. Should have been the the uh, the Wookies. In my the costumes personal. were too expensive. It was, it was easier <laughs> and cheaper to go Ewoks. Are you just saying that because you like cute small things like Baby Yoda? I You're do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Alex Tordai says hello from fellow Chicagoan. Uh, would you uh, broke to see? Oh, would you? Uh, I don't know. Broke to see pod? Would you go broke to see pod racing in a future Mandalorian episode? Would be a great way to introduce the huts, in my opinion. Yeah. What do you think, there, Laura? Ooh, yeah. I mean, the the pod racing element would be really cool, just because we somehow like it, it's kind of strange out of all of the Star Wars media that we've gotten. Um, yeah. on screen that we haven't really, I guess I don't play video games. So if it's come up in a, in a, in a video game at some point in the canon, I wouldn't know. Um, yeah. But the fact that the, that it hasn't been shown on screen yet in a subsequent film has been, I don't know. That's kind of interesting to me. It's, yeah. it's, and it's surprising. So I think it would be really cool to get to see it again. It'd be great. I, it's funny. There, there are some very strong defenders of that prequel trilogy, but they, it doesn't seem like this sequel trilogy wanted anything to do with that prequel trilogy. They tried really hard to evoke the original trilogy, don't you think? Yeah, no, at this point, I'm, I'm actually not convinced that J.J. Abrams has ever seen the prequels. So, I'm, yeah, I <laughs> fully believe that. <laughs> don't show me this. And no, I'm not going to watch it. Uh, I'm going to pull myself out for a second, or I'm still pixelating. So uh, feel free to entertain the people. I'm, I'll be right back. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'll be back. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. 
I want to talk about the Mandalorian a little bit more because we haven't we there's just no way that we finished up. So I am uh, I want to talk about how we've got some directors announced already, or at least I think some of them are revealed in the Entertainment Weekly coverage. Um, John Favreau directing episode one of season two, which is fantastic. By the way, if you're sending in Streamlabs, I can't see you. So right. I, yeah, uh, true, true. Yeah. How am I doing? How am I doing now, Sean? Am I good? Okay, good, good, good. Sorry, guys. Uh, and thank you, Laura. I appreciate you holding it down for a few seconds here. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered how long it would be. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> Mugbang Review says, as a Star Wars fan, which single character is your favorite, if any? I think you were great in the Schmodown. Do you miss it? Ah, so let's answer the first question. Which single character is your favorite? I have a suspicion who it might be. Uh, but uh, and, and then we'll address the Schmodown thing. So which is your favorite Star Wars character? Um, in terms of like over all of the star wars media mm -hmm. i would harrison doula from star wars rebels oh. is one of my favorite characters okay. um by far i mean it's for sometimes sometimes it kind of jumps back and forth between her and like kane and jarris just depending on like what mood i'm in um but I, I i've always loved those two characters and i was always sort of saddened by the fact that we didn't get a ton of um kanan and harris centric episodes in yeah. in star wars rebels i guess and towards towards the end we did a little bit but um, I, I would have loved to have spent more time with them. Um, and I, I really don't know what it is about that character. I, she's not somebody that I like identify with that. I think that I'm like similar to her in any way. Mm. I just admire who she is as a person. I love that. She's like the leader of this group, but she's kind of the secret leader of the group. Right. Um, the impression that you're supposed to get is that Kanan is the leader. Um, but, but yeah, really it's all on her and I love her relationship with Chopper and with everybody on the ghost crew. So she's always been my favorite character. You don't think you're like her name? You don't think you're an alpha who'd want to be in charge of things? I just really? thought she Laura like Kelly, really? Nurturing. She's like, she's got such a nurturing personality and I ah. kind of don't. Like, that's just <laughs> not really, that's not really who I am at all. So it's like, it's one of those things that I admire when other people have, but it's not something that I have myself. Wow. So. Laura, all right. Well, Laura Kelly, not a tender person. Let's put that out. Let's put that out. <laughs> I'm a little bit heartless. So. <laughs> oh, there it is. Nice. That's why she's with corruption. Uh, all right, and the, like, the second part of this was, uh, I thought you were great. At the show. Do you miss it? Yeah. Do you miss uh, not playing or had you hit that wall where you're like, you know what? I did lose, but I'm okay. Taking a little bit of a break for a while. Or have you, have you kind of come back around now where you'd like to get in the ring before the end of the year for, for a Star Wars match? Uh, the what the point that I'm going to come back around to is is going to be at spectacular when oh. when Ace and when um, Alex play I'm going to be annoyed and I'm going to be upset that I'm not playing wow. um, at that point but at the moment I'm frankly I'm really enjoying the break um, I was yeah. it was one of those things that I had really mixed feelings when I lost to Ace um, in that I was really I was kind of relieved it was over I was kind of relieved to like have my summer back mm -hmm. um, and have have my time to myself but. The Shmodan also, at, you know, in this really crucial time when the pandemic was, kind, we were kind of at the heart of the pandemic and yeah. you know, it felt like the whole world was crumbling around me. I had this thing that helped keep me focused and it sort of focused my energy and it gave me a routine right. um, and it gave me something to kind of work towards it with yeah. a very specific goal in mind. And that was, it was nice to have that. So I guess I, I sort of miss that. Um, the character stuff was a really fun component for me that I got to bring to the table this year, I didn't, you know, anybody who saw my first two matches or three matches, I didn't really do anything um, with that piece of it, which was fine. But the characters have really brought a, like a whole new component to the game for me. It just made it so much more fun yeah. um, than it ever has before. And working with Shannon and working with um, the rest of my teammates on Corruption, everyone was is just fantastic. So yeah. it really was, it was a completely different experience this year, and I loved every minute of it. Wow. Uh, coming up with the promos, all that, like, did that intimidate you, or did you have a natural, I mean, you already showed a little a little bit here quickly, how quickly you could turn into the heartless person. So did, did you have, <laughs> a, like, was that, that's already a gear you have, and you just needed to write certain things to kind of fit? where it was or did you and Shannon uh, um, uh, brainstorm it or was Kalinowski involved? Like how did this all come about for you? Um, you know, Shannon was involved. It was one of those things where, you know, Mike was really involved with my, um, with like studying and the, oh. the sort of study sessions we had, but in terms of character stuff, that was much more like between kind of me and Shannon. Mm -hmm. um, and most of that was just me going back and watching opponents matches and um, then just like letting loose. So right. that was, that was really fun for me that getting to sit and like write all of that out and send it to Shannon and then, you know, get feedback from other people on it and then go back and rewrite it because 
uh, and just to you know make it better. And it was it always it turned out really great. So I yeah. I was really really proud of how all of that came out this year. Um, and I had I was it was just great to have be able to have a lot of fun with it um, right. and just get to show a different a different side. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you're a competitive person. I know you've posted, uh, you know, when you're kicking ass in a bar trivia Star Wars thing, you've posted on your social media. You're you're not shy about showing how much you know about Star Wars. So uh, as you were negotiating these matches, were you surprised at the level of the questions? Did you think? you'd have an easier time of it initially uh, and then just understood these questions are going to be next level. Or did you know that going in that these questions were going to be difficult to answer? No, I was not aware how difficult, how much they were going to sort of up the ante this year um, mm. in, with the tournament specifically. They definitely, um, they put some work into like making oh, yeah. those challenges, th these, these questions a lot more challenging than they have been in the past. That's not to say that there weren't challenging questions, um, in past matches, there definitely were, um, it, especially in like, you know, the final rounds that we would watch and in, in wager rounds and things. Yeah. There's, there's been some really difficult questions, but this tournament, like they really kicked it up a notch and it was so impressive and it made it so fun for yeah. people like me. And I, I sometimes wonder if like, if you're not really into Star Wars trivia, like, is that, is it not as fun when they're getting that deep in the like the deep dives and the deep cuts that they're going for? Does that make it less fun for other right, people? Because right. it makes it so fun for me. <laughs> like I really, really enjoy it. Even if it's just me yeah. sitting at home, like typing up and just being like, oh my God, that was a good one. Like <laughs> it's it's great. No, I will tell you, as someone who's not as knee deep into it as, as some of you all are, it was just as enjoyable to watch. And uh, you know, Kevin and I were playing each other on uh, text. I say playing each other and that Kevin was, you know, basically stomping me into the ground, but it was fun to play along, but also watch because although I may not know the answers, the drama is there. The tension is there. Uh, and you can tell which questions are like, what by the look, the momentary looks on the faces. I mean, that citation question was out of control. Like, I, I had no idea how anybody could remember that. Uh, but did, after the first match, did you find that you had to adjust your training even more or did you go just trust what you'd already established or what you'd already learned? You know, it was really more trusting what I had already learned, but I, without taking any of the matches into, into consideration, I'm kind yep. of always finding new, new material that I need to be studying or a ah. new method, um, that I need to sort of put into practice while I'm watching the films. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, you know, I have a lot of help. I have a lot of people that are, you know, that are quizzing me that are coming up with questions. I mean, oh, on first host, we have, we have people write in questions all the time um, yeah. to, to try and stump me and Alice. And they often do. They're usually very good. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, it's been, it's, it's always sort of a thing that's, it's always in motion. And yeah. even leading up to this tournament, I kind of came up, I was like, Oh, you know what? There's like this big, hole in my like knowledge that I know how to fill and I know the material that I need to go study, but I haven't done that yet. And I'm not going to have time leading up to this tournament. And that sucks. Um, but it's something that I know that I can be working on in my off season so that I can really up my game and just come even more ready to, to get up to bat next yeah. season. Right on. Yeah. Um, we all look forward to that. We all look forward to that for sure. Me Laura. too. Uh, Clay Major. Oh, my boy, Clay. This is my friend Clay from, uh, man, he's been around for a long time. It's the first time he's ever sent a question. I think he said, Mando is a spaghetti Western set in the Star Wars universe. What other movie genre would you love to see set in the Star Wars universe? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I've thought about this a lot because I love when, like, I don't know what the, what exactly the term would be, but I kind of think of it as like genre bending. <laughs> And I sometimes think of Rogue One as kind of doing that a little bit. Like Rogue One was like a real war movie right. um, set in the Star Wars universe, which I thought was so fun and so cool and really well executed. Yeah. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is like, is romance. Like I love the romance that we get <laughs> in Star Wars books um, and the prequels didn't really do that for me. And, you know, I know that the, the original trilogy had, had its romance and obviously the sequel trilogy had, very um divisive romance in it but i it's one of those things about Star Wars that i really love and i've i've talked about lost stars on the jedi mm. way before and how that lost book stars. has has amazing romance in it and we finally got the like you know the will they won't they to resolve in star wars rebels and then i was just yeah. like in heaven 
Um, and so I, that's one genre that if they were to take it in that direction and just do like a whole movie of, or a whole show of just that, like I would be fully on board. <laughs> so you're talking about like a romance, like a moonlighting situation, or are you talking about like a rom-com? What are you talking, what kind of, oh. what kind of <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a wrong common Star Wars, holy shit. Um, no, that wasn't at all what I was thinking, but I, that is a really funny idea now that you say it out loud. Um, no, I, I mean, I was thinking, like, it's still a Star Wars movie. Like, if you right. were to just take if you were to just take Lost Stars and turn it into a film, like, I would be 100% on board. And yeah. just because the romance factor in that is so, it's such a big component in that book. And there's a little bit of, like, the will they, won't they, too. But then, like, even once they get together, it's not like Jim and Pam on the office where you're suddenly right. just like, oh, I don't know if I really care about this anymore. Like now I'm just like fully wow. into it. And it's, it's yeah, that I would love to just see Star Wars take a little bit more of like a risk and bring something like that plot point to more of the forefront in a film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, to answer your Clay, brother, uh, to answer your question, Clay, uh, brother, I think, uh, I think I would like to see like a Goodfellas type uh, movie in Star Wars. We've come close. We've never quite gotten fully there. Uh, and it's been the, one of those frustrating things for me uh, over this new regime, uh, over the time of this new regime, because I've I thought that's what they were going for. I thought that's what a Star Wars story was supposed to be. Somewhere there's another director's cut of Rogue One that's way darker and way more brutal and way more vicious. And I wanted to see that. That's what they said these Star Wars stories were supposed to be completely separate from the trilogies, not necessarily storyline wise, but mood wise, atmosphere wise, and let these directors come in and do their version of Star Wars uh, kind of unfettered. Yeah, supervised, but unfettered. Let them do their own thing. Uh, and then, you know, uh, much love to Kathleen Kennedy. She's made $6 billion off this damn thing. So you can't fault her too much about her stewardship. I know there are people who are going to have issues with some of the stuff she's done, but. To turn a profit. And that's what you hire an executive to do is to turn a profit. Uh, but in the end, I would have liked to have seen some more br and, uh, brutal stuff, some more gangster stuff. I know Underworld was that series ABC was working on. Lucas had written a bunch of scripts for that. Uh, and I thought that was more what I want to see. The Hut Underworld, the Underworld of Star Wars. That would have been something like Game of, something like Game of Thrones, the kind of grittiness of Game of Thrones uh, in Star Wars would have been fun. And I think Mandalorian touches on it but it doesn't fully dive into it. And uh, you would think a bounty hunter show could, but in the end, I think they still want to keep it somewhat for the PG 13 uh, people uh, or and even some of the kids who are a little bit younger than 13 to enjoy. So I hope someday we'll get that. All right, I'm cool with the romance. If they do it right, I'm down with that. I got no issues with the romance. What about a star Wars horror movie? Oh, that's possible too. That's, I mean, I think that would work. I don't it know just, how they would do it, but it would be really funny if they did it. Now you have to get Kanja Club. I guess you have to get Kanja Club and get that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We got Muckbang Review sent another one. I says, I think Laura is great. I miss Chicago and it's summer weather. I don't miss Chicago winters. Brutal. What's the most fun or worst time you had in a Chicago winter? Laura Kelly. Ooh, Chicago winters aren't they? They're not as bad as I think they, the reputation. I think I've had really good luck. Like the first couple of years that I lived here, it was like it never really got that cold. It snowed, but it you know eventually it melts and it's not that bad. Um, there's only been like one winter where it was just like there was so much snow. Right. I got so sick of it so quickly. The it makes the commute awful. Right. Um, but yeah, that 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 kind of that part of it is sort of sucked. But my favorite thing that I've ever done in Chicago winter is go to uh, <laughs> the Lincoln Park Zoo. If you're familiar with the Lincoln Park Zoo here in Chicago, it is a free zoo, oh. uh, which is fantastic. Um, it, it's run purely on donations. Um, and it uh, they do a an adults night, which is great because it's oh, when I say it's free, it's it's free, you know, for all there's in zoos often as they often are, are, are there's just children everywhere, which is mm -hmm. not my idea of a good time. Um, <laughs> but they do adults night. And there are like beer carts everywhere and it's just super fun. And it's, a, it's a great time to get together with friends and be able to be outside, even if it's in the winter, because the lights are up um, or even like, you know, they'll still have kind of like fall decorations and stuff up. Cause it often, yeah. uh, every once in a while it snows here in October. It sometimes won't snow here until like December. It's wow. sort of, you know, it's not, it's really not too bad. It just sucks because okay. it sometimes then will snow in April, which yeah. really stinks. Um, but the the adults night at the Chicago at Lincoln Park Zoo is a lot of fun. It's just cool to get to like walk around with your friends and see the animals and be able to drink outside and right see on. the lights and not be surrounded by little people. Yeah, you're not you're not a fan of kids. So we're discovering about 
Laura Kelly, not a fan of ha- uh, kids, not a fan, and, uh, and uh, heartless. That's what we've discovered about yeah. Laura Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's accurate. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right. Uh, One Big Six Impulse says, my favorite quote is, this is where the fun begins, said by Anakin. I work at a restaurant. When it gets busy, I always say it, LOL. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, one. Uh, do you remember that one? Do you remember? I'm sure you do, Laura. I'm sure you do. Oh, yes, naturally. One Fit Six Impulse also says, when I was four, my great-grandpa put on Star Wars Episode Four on VHS, and my mom told me when Darth Vader first came to the screen, I was in awe. I couldn't stop smiling. My mom thought I was going to be scared. Nope, LOL. Damn, I love Star Wars. So there you go. Yeah, did, did Darth Vader, what was your first experience like watching a Star Wars movie? Were you a child? Was it later on? In- we talked about you really diving into Star Wars in 2015, but had you seen it before then? Anything at all? You know, I mean, just being a human that exists in a world full of pop culture, you definitely like, I mean, I knew what it was. I I even mm-hmm. understood some of the references having not seen the movie. But right. my, I mean, the first Star Wars movie I ever saw was The Phantom Menace. So my first impression of Oof. Darth Vader was a nine-year-old Oof. boy, uh, not 10, nine. But he, yeah, so that was, that was an interesting, it was an interesting way to sort of to <laughs> enter the shot. universe, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I tried watching it. Listen, I've been trying to go back, you know, because we co-host the show. I'm trying to go back and watch some of these uh, prequel trilogy movies. And they are, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they're a fucking bear to watch. If that first film, Phantom Menace, I was 45 minutes into Phantom Menace and I just ran out of paper. I got, I can't even mentally log in how, how many terrible things that happened in the first 45 minutes of this movie that drove me insane. By the, I just turned it off after a while. Cause I was like, cause I mean, look, I love star Wars, but that's like, it's too much. You're asking too much of me. So uh, at some point I will, and maybe I should do a watch along uh, for the patrons here on the outlaw nation and just sit down and do a watch along of that prequel trilogy. And that way I can get through it. Uh, I know Joseph and I did a watch along with Mark Donica way back when on Jedi Alliance for Buzzfeed of attack of the clones. And they convinced me, I think because through mental or Jedi powers, they convinced me that it wasn't as bad as people had purported it, <laughs> purported it to be because Joseph is a big defender of the, of the prequel trilogy. Um, do you go back and watch those more? Yeah, I mean, I have to for trivia, but I mm. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of in the same boat as you a little bit because uh, my co-host on Force Toast, Alice, is a yeah. huge, she's a huge prequel fan. Really? Um, she's very much a prequel wow. enthusiast, yeah. And so in Attack of the Clones okay. is her, like, favorite movie of all time. Like, not even just, like, her favorite Star Wars movie. Like, it's one of her favorite movies. <laughs> and, you know, it's she loves, okay. like... It's the beautiful scenery. It's the, oh, you know, sure. that, the gorgeous shot of Anakin and Padme in the arenas, you know, the silhouettes of them. And then it pans mm. across and you see the jet. I mean, that all that kind of stuff, the music in it. There's yeah. she loves the romance, the romantic component of it. She's, you know, she's just fully on board with it. And so yeah. not too long ago, I did a uh, I recorded an audio commentary of the movie with uh, oh. Alice and our friend Alden um, from the from the Octo radio <laughs> podcast and it was so not Aaron Reich not Alden Aaron Reich no no no, no no different um, Alden okay, okay. <laughs> different Alden um but it, it was for his show Octo Radio and it was really, it was so much fun and I was just kind of like you know what this is Alice's favorite movie this is going to be kind of like her right. um opportunity to sort of like really just enjoy sit back and enjoy this and talk about what she enjoys and how she enjoys it and my idea was just like, well, I'm just gonna like bring, I'll just bring like trivia, like that'll just be the thing that oh, like I can, right. that I bring to the game, and I'll just be like, um, that's an XJ6 airspeeder <laughs> that Anakin's in. You're welcome. Like, it's just, wow. you know, <laughs> but super it's still, nerding out. <laughs> still ended up being a lot of fun. We had a, we had a ton of fun talking about it, and it is really fun to watch it with somebody who really loves it. Yeah. Um, they they will kind of get into your head a little bit, and if you can kind of see yeah. through that it does make it a little bit more fun um yeah. but i mean i totally get where you're coming from i watched the prequels for the first time all of them all three together as an adult oh wow. which i i was coming at it from a different point of view from all the other people in my generation who watched mm-hmm. those movies as kids and that was their star wars i don't really identify right. the prequel being my star wars yeah. i identify more with like the post disney buyout era um because that's when i became a fan but right. i right. yeah it's it's interesting if you can kind of if you can wrap your mind around watching it through someone else's eyes or even with another person that really loves it. It makes yeah. a difference, I think. Look, the visuals in that in those movies are incredible. I'm never going to deny that, other than the diner scene and the, the visions throughout. <laughs> I mean, the visuals throughout are phenomenal to watch. 
but it's just some of that dialogue, sweet Mary, mother of God, and some of the performances, and no fault of their own, in my opinion. I blame Lucas for the uh, wooden performances of some of the actors in those movies because it must have been a bear to try and do that, and the pressure, you know, the pressure of doing Star Wars, which we're seeing now how uh, Daisy Ridley, Boyega, and Oscar Isaac responded to the pressure after they got out of the NDAs and spoke their truths about that experience. So, you know, it's not for everybody. It is not for everybody. And it can really work on you. I think Natalie Portman said how she really contemplated suicide after doing those uh, uh, films because it was, it made her question her abilities as an actress really deeply, you know, and that's a tough thing to, to come out of. Um, Andrew Hale sent in a stream lab and, I, and we're going to get to the people who are live and waiting in just a second. He said, love your star Wars run in the showdown. Kelly, you are already a Star Wars champion. It's only a matter of when. Question, maybe you touched on this already, but at what age did you start watching Star Wars? We just talked about that. And how did your love of Star Wars grow out to be? Like, how did it come about? Um, I blame Star Wars Rebels for that, for the most <laughs> part. And, you know, I was, I was as much as I enjoyed the show, the movies, and I really did, um, going, getting to actually sit and watch um like a new Star Wars thing that was happening as it was happening, as yeah. the new episodes were coming out and to be able to like interact with other fans, um, mostly on like Twitter and Reddit at that time, yeah. that made it really fun for me. And that really kind of solidified my, my place in the Star Wars fandom because I was like, Hey, I've now I've found my people um, that also love this piece of media as much as I do. And, you know, now I am here to stay and none of you can get rid of me. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, but the movies, obviously, you know, they're a lot of fun too. And, you yeah. know, the other half of that is getting to sort of be in the Star Wars fandom as Rogue One, like the the um, anticipation was building for Rogue One as people yeah. were waiting for teasers and trailers and, um, and all the news and even like the drama that was happening, you know, behind the scenes, all of it was like, that was sort of like imprinted upon me as a Star Wars fan, because that was like the first movie that I got to watch all of that kind of happen start to finish. Like I, I sort of missed it with, with, uh, the force awakens, but rogue one, I was like fully in it from start to finish in that yeah. point. And it was, it made a huge difference, I think. And it definitely drew me in and yeah, kept me here. <laughs> yeah. I do love rogue one. That's my favorite one. That's why I have it on the shelf. It's my favorite one, uh, of the new ones. Uh, I put it's empire. Stri I know people get mad at me, but it's empire strikes back and then rogue one right behind. I just love it, man. People can't get mad. If it's your favorite, it's your favorite. It's yeah. subject to your opinion. No yeah. one's allowed to be mad about what, whose favorite movie is what. Right. Come at Own me, your bro. truth. Come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, all right, Cal underscore Kestis. And I'll ask this the last one, then we'll move into some live questions and come back to streaming live super chats. He says, uh, how did John and Laura, who from the Star Wars and geek punditry, punditry space, would you like to see hop into the Star Wars Schmodown ring? Keep up the great work and enjoy your evening. Also, Jedi Fallen Order is some of the best modern Star Wars content, in my opinion. All right, Laura, uh, who would you want to see jump into this Schmodown ring of Star Wars stuff? from uh, the geek world of punditry. Uh, and do you like Jedi Fallen Order? Uh, Jedi Fallen Order, I, I'm not a gamer, you guys. I'm really sorry. I have never played it. I haven't even really spent that much time watching the, the cutscenes from it. So I have, you know, I'm not someone to ask about video games, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's non -ap not applicable. But in terms of, um, like, punditry, it's, it's kind of, it's, I feel like it's kind of like everybody who would be in it is already in it. Mm, fair. <laughs> um, but that's, I, I'm sure you have a better answer for that. I think in terms of who else I would like to have involved in the actual Schmodown, um, a, a woman named Marie, I think was her first name, just won Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. Star Wars trivia, which is a huge accomplishment because right. if any of you took the placement test or attempted to take the placement test uh, for Dragon Con, it was extremely difficult. I only got 33 out of 50 right. Um, wow. It was a very, very hard test, even though it was multiple choice. I sw you know that I didn't cheat because that was the score that I got. So right, that's, I mean, right. truthfully, that's, that's what I came up to. Um, but the fact that she won... I, that, I mean, that's huge. So yeah. I would love to see her become involved in the Shmodan if that's something that she's even interested in. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Um, but that would be that would be something I'd love to see. Hey, fair. I think Nathan Hamill getting involved would be fun. I'm probably I'm sure Nathan. Yeah, I'm sure Nathan isn't, you know, isn't jumping to go be a part of it. But I think Nathan Hamill would be fun uh, to have on uh, uh, to compete in the Star Wars division and maybe even shoot a video with his dad, a promo video with his dad. That would be absolutely excellent to see that at some point down the road. Nathan is good, fan, good friends with uh, Ken, with uh, Riley, 
uh, with a number of people involved on the Schmode, Schmodown side of things. So, uh, and I like Nathan. I've met him a few times. Really great conversation with him. So why not? It would be a lot of fun to have Nathan be a part of the Star Wars Schmodown situation. All right, let's bring my producer in, Sean, to tell people how they can come in live. We'll bring in a couple of the $10 patrons that are already waiting. And that's the thing. For those of you who are new to the Outlaw Nation, we have the Patreon right above my head right there. Number of tiers you can join at and be involved in the shows that we do here, which will start be starting up again. Uh, I had to focus on starting for three really big matches. So uh, uh, yeah, it didn't turn out my way, but uh, I had to focus on studying them for them. So they was kind of put on the back burner. They'll be back in motion for all of you to participate in who are Schmodown patrons uh, and the rest of you to watch who are not Schmodown patrons. But if you'd like to be able to ask your question live first, uh, one of the perks of being a $10 Schmodown patron on is on the Outlaw Nation is you get to come into the show and do so. But Sean, tell them how people will be able to come in a little bit later after uh, after these people to ask their questions. Hello. Uh, how's, how's it going, John? Laura? Good. Nice. Nice seeing you again. Um, so, yeah, just kind of like how John said, everybody. So all the patrons uh, of the Outlaw Nation already have uh, the heads up. So they, the, the link has been posted in Discord. So they're ready in backstage already for everybody else. Um, as soon as I leave um, here now, I will put the link in the chat. And then you can be backstage as well. So if you click on the link, it'll bring you to StreamYards, which is the uh, web browser that we're using to run this show. It will ask you to verify your headphones and your microphone. So please, if you're please, we prefer you to use those because yes. if you're using just not using it, we might get an echo situation, and that might be hard for uh, John and Laura to hear you. So please try to use a microphone and headphones if you can. Yeah. Um, and then just it'll place you backstage, so John will be able to see you, and he can bring you in at, on at, at any time. So please be ready, and yeah. please have your question ready because usually. We can have a lot of people on here. We want to try to get through as many people as possible. So just come on, ask a question, be nice, and then we'll move yeah. on. Thanks, you, Sean. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Thank you for Thank you. producing the show, brother hey, man. You're welcome. And oh yeah, you want so a question? I would like a question. All right, sure, sure. So, yeah, sure. so Laura, uh, we're gonna play like a, a quick little game. So <laughs> one question you said, yeah, not a game. I have, Sean. I have this it is one question. Just All right. relax. But only get relax. one, though. You know, you like to add in your second and third question. So oh, you only get God. One. Go ahead. See, you're making this longer. <laughs> uh, imagine now if if um, you were given the keys to the Star Wars kingdom. Kathleen Kennedy retired, and they hired you to run Star Wars. What would your next trilogy be, Oof. a standalone movie would be, and two TV shows? Now, the thing is, you can't Good answer time, you can't answer with something that's already been either rumored or kind of come from like the Kenobi thing we kind of know about and okay. things like that. So what would you be, think? Oh, my God. I would need to spend way more time trying yeah. to prepare. Or just one of those. Just one of, like, one what of those. Would, okay, trilogy. What, would, what kind of trilogy would you want? I mean, before you put the parameters in place, I would have been like, I would just be greenlighting the, the Ryan Johnson trilogy. I would be like, just go, man. Do what you got to do. Don't listen to any studio executives trying to tell you how to change your movie. Um, man, that's hard to say. I know that I would love to like jump into the future a little bit. Like we spent a lot of time, you know, over this like 170 ish period, uh, 70 ish years period of Star Wars. And I would love, and I, you know, with the High Republic, we're going to be jumping back 200 years. And I, I think my instinct would just be like, let's jump like 500 years into the future and nice. see where we end up, what we end up with and, you know, what storylines could we pursue? What genre bending can we do? Um, but yeah, it, I think that would probably be my, my first instinct, but it's hard to say. I mean, I get this, I feel like I get questions a lot of like, you know, what book do you want to see and things like that. And it's, it's always hard because I'm like, I feel like they have so much good stuff in, in the wings already. And I'm just kind of waiting for the day that I get like a Harrison Dula novel um <laughs> but it was yeah i i it's hard to say it's hard to think about that because i'm just like first of all no one would ever put me in charge of lucasfilm rightfully yeah. so um but i yeah i think that the the answer is to really start getting away from the time periods that we've been stuck in um as much as i enjoy it and as much as i enjoy like the era of the rebellion and the rising of the resistance like i i enjoy all those eras a lot but it would just be great to sort of cut the cord completely and get away from everything that we already know and just find a new route to go down yeah. a new path. Well, Star Trek just did it with discovery, sending P sending them into the year 3000 or something like that. So yeah, they cut the ties all around. <laughs> all right, Sean, thanks for your one question. Thank you, Sean, for your one question. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> 
I'll bring you back in later, brother. Thank you, man. Uh, all right, let's go to Joey, who's been waiting in the attic. Uh, oh, sorry, Jay Scotty, for real. What's up, Jay Scotty? How are you, dude? Yeah, I don't know who Joey is, but that's okay. Yeah, I reading. You know what? You know, give me a break. I got my eyes going. <laughs> You're good. You're good. It's all good. Good to see you. Hi, Laura. Hey, Scotty, Laura, Laura, J. Oh, Scotty. Hello. Nice to see you. Greetings from the attic. Greetings from the attic. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say I'm glad some people have asked some non-Star Wars questions. Have asked some Chicago and Schmodown questions. Uh, I I did my best to come up with one that wasn't Star Wars related, but oh, cool. uh, no, that well I. I say that, but I, I oh, felt I right. had to take advantage of her uh, her expertise and uh, and ask All a right. Star Wars. Why not? So. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things about Star Wars, and uh, one of the things I think that works so well for the Mandalorian, is the variety of alien species we get to see in Star Wars. Uh, so one of my favorite episodes was actually Episode Two, directed by Rick Fam Famuyiwa, um, the Child, which we got to see a lot of the uh, like Jawa culture. So I wanted to ask, is there a particular alien species that we've seen in Star Wars that you'd like to see explored a little more closely as far as their culture? That's a really good question. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of like right off the bat. I mean, I've, I've talked about Hera a lot today, but like the Twi'leks are so varied in just their general looks. I mean, even just like the difference of like Cham Sundula to Harris Sundula, they just look look very different. Um, and I love that like there's a lot of them sort of have like, or I guess mostly in the Clone Wars, like have this sort of French accent. And I, the, the free Ryloff movement is a huge component in, you know, the client in the Clone Wars storytelling. And we don't spend a ton of time with it. And it would be really interesting, I think, just to get a little bit more insight into where that entire movement generated from like how long has it been going on because it kind of seems like it's been going on for a really 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 long time um and then just kind of follow up and see where they're at and sort of the age of the new republic because by the time we get to the new republic and like the um oh what book was it bloodline like i think that you know there's still there's the twi'leks are still mentioned and kind of what they're doing and their status of like being independent is sort of in question at that point still um, so it'd be really great just to kind of dive into the, uh, into the culture, I think of that group and see, you know, where did all of this start and how did it start and why has it been such an ongoing struggle for them for so long? Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. Jay Scott, are you good with that? Yeah. Yeah. I like that answer. I think the, the Twi'leks are, are interesting species because we've seen them, you know, on both sides of the, you know, good and evil. We've seen Bib Fortuna, but we've also seen right. Ayla Secura. Um, for me, I was going to go with uh, the Ithorians. Um, you know, we see that one in the cantina scene in A New Hope. And then um, there's the one, I don't know if you're familiar with the Jindy Tartakovsky uh, animated oh, yeah. Clone Wars series, but he actually had yeah. an Ithorian Jedi um, in that scene when uh, General Grievous kidnaps Palpatine. And it was actually pretty cool to see one of those in action. So, John, did you have a particular species? No, that Latinos. Oh, there's a Latino <laughs> Jedi just once. Is that too fucking much to ask? You gave yeah. Mace a purple fucking lightsaber. Give me. You can even make it Mexican colors, the lightsaber. I don't give a shit. Just give me a Latino Jedi. But I have said this for years, and you can go back and find Jedi lines tapes and far, far away tapes. I have said for years that Boba Fett or the Mandalorians are Latinos, and when they cast Pedro Pascal, I was vindicated. And I, I truly believe that that is the Latino representation in Star Wars or the Mandalorian. So I felt a certain uh, love for that show and for Pedro. Uh, and the fact that Pedro just followed me on Twitter, which is insane. Uh, I felt a lot of love for that uh, with him. Plus he's South American. And so it's like, there's a connection there because my parents are Bolivian. So it's like so much of it was wrapped up in that happening. So I have a special affinity for that. So aside from that, I would like to see some of the more Latino characters in Star Wars who are Jedi who are part of the mysticism because we can meditate too. We can talk philosophy too. I just want to make it clear. It isn't all just, you know, other people. Uh, all right, Jay Scotty. Thanks, man. It's good to see you. Thanks. May the force be with you guys. Take you care. Too. And also with you, I guess. That's how it's <laughs> <laughs> always the instinct to respond with that. I'm like, I know it's not right, but I always want to say it. <laughs> uh, Smithy, director Alan Smithy is coming in. Smithy, what's up, bud? Good evening. How is everybody doing? Uh, Fabulous. How are you? I am excellent. Good to meet you, Laura Kelly. 
Nice to meet you. You have a very strong beard game happening here. There's different shades. I'm, I'm oh, yes. fully on board. Love it. I was actually going to make a joke earlier that I'm actually Jake Lloyd, and I've just prematurely been aged. But... <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Hey, man, you're right. Star Wars does uh, hurt some people's lives every now and then. Hey, man, it ain't an easy thing to be a part of, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say, Laura, I was on a debate show once, and the one of the questions was best Star Wars promo from the tournament, and I picked yours. Oh, yay, uh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, uh, you don't have to make fancy things with lots of editing to, like, make the point, and you nailed it, and you just sat there and boom. Interestingly enough, Adam Witt was one of the uh, judges, so I don't know if he... Uh, I don't know if he liked it as much, but may not anyway. have appreciated that answer. Okay. Thank you though so much. I, re I really do okay. appreciate it. I put a lot of work into those. So that I, All that right. means a lot. So thank you. Yeah. On the download, Laura said there were 30 takes each. There were a lot of takes that she did. on the <laughs> there, were no, there were no cuts, you know, no cuts. It was just, I know to, that was job. pretty impressive. That was because even All I right. cut my promos now. Those were right. pretty impressive. So, thank uh, you. yeah. Now I know this isn't the most diverse choice. <laughs> but why is it that uh, he hasn't even heard what I said yet? He's like, no. oh, this is the premise <laughs> but, uh, is perfect. What about a Peter Jackson Star Wars trilogy? I love the Lord of the Rings so movies so much. He does all the effects. He knows all of those things. Uh, New Zealand's pretty diverse, I guess. We'll say that. You know, it is. But anyway, uh, what do you think about that? You're not gonna like my answer because I'm not really a big Lord of the Rings. Person. Yes. Like yes! I've seen. Okay, oh. so I've seen. I've seen two of the movies i saw the first two i don't exists. think i ever saw return of the king wow. um, oh, and i've never oh. watched any of the hobbit movies i've never read the books it's just it's one of those things that they just never appealed to me and the movies were so long and i was like you know this is good this is fun yeah. but i'm like i i wouldn't be diving i would never be going down that road to like prepare for an inner geekdom match of the schmodown at like to have any of that knowledge so yeah. um yeah, I'm like, I, I couldn't even provide an educated answer to that. But I mean, it's in in theory, it sounds like a good idea. It also kind yeah. of sounds like something that like, sort. I feel like it already kind of is Peter Jackson's Star Wars a little bit. Like, I mean, it's all fantasy. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. it with like, I guess there's a little bit more like science fiction component to Star Wars. But at the end of the day, it's still mostly fantasy. Right. Um, so we're kind of already there unless right. you want to just go shoot it in New Zealand, I guess is kind of the biggest <laughs> <laughs> the thing that comes to mind. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer right. for that. I just am not as not as educated in that fandom. It's OK. I'd like, though, to point out to Roka that she's seen two of the Lord of the Rings movies and yeah. zero of the Hobbit movies. Yeah. Well, only because. <laughs> She hasn't had the Hobbit movies. He yeah, doesn't. I, like the I like the Hobbit. I don't. Love, I like the Hobbit. Like, movies. like he likes Lord it. of the Rings movies bore me to tears, and I just yeah. I can't with those little hobbits. They annoy the crap out of me. Yeah, I just no. can't. Stop crying all the time and take the ring to the mountain already. But the Lord, but Rachel, <laughs> Cushing, Rachel right. Cushing, uh, cleared me up on that, so I had to give her props when she was on the Elmo Nation. I had one yeah. more quick yeah. question. All right, yeah, more, yeah. Don't, is... don't make Sean do. I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Take Sean's <laughs> well, question, Smithy. Sean also said, be nice. And I'm like, whoa, did someone blow it earlier that I missed? No, no, everyone's been cool. He's just, oh, he yeah. just likes to say that. Go ahead. So, Laura, uh, Barris Offy, mm -hmm. you're familiar with the character, right? I so am, yes. Where do you think that name comes from? Oh, I don't how know. Do you, do you have the you answer to that question? I'm not sure. Well, I'm just assuming. How do you spell her last name? Uh, I think it's O-F-F-E-E, -E, but I could be wrong. Right. And right. that is the word coffee. Well, just they took the speed <laughs> away, right? So what do you call a professional coffee maker? <laughs> yeah, barrister. Oh, there it is, barista. A barista. Oh. barista. Her name <laughs> is basically barista coffee, but they took the two letters out, and it's Barris coffee. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for Star Wars, it sort of checks out. I mean, yeah. is, uh. wasn't the whole thing with Saifu Diaz? It was like a typo in the script. It was supposed to say Sidious. And they ended up having oh. to go with Stifo Diaz because nobody caught it. <laughs> um, so I, right. I think that like totally checks out, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I don't honestly, I'm not sure if actually if Barris was named in the credits of the prequel films. I think she was. Oh, so okay. we can't even like blame the Clone Wars for this. Like this is somebody right. who was working on the movies that right. like came up with that name and just left it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my favorite bad Star Wars name is Pre Vizsla. Um, oh, yeah. Previously. Yeah, that one's a little on the nose. They <laughs> might as well just call him like cinematography. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Please. it's a great nothing, character, though. Great character. Nothing yeah. beats uh, James Cameron with unobtainium. Nothing beats that. That's too. That's on the nose. Unobtainium 
in Avatar. <laughs> That's but, one of those. Unobtainium is a real theoretical object. Come on. <laughs> I could cut it out. It's cut real, it. theoretically. Theoretically. <laughs> anyway, so. uh, all right. Thanks, Smithy. It's good to see well, you, brother. Good, good to meet you, Laura. And great to see you again, Roca. And oh, uh, nice. sad to see you leave one show. Uh, but hopefully we'll see a lot more of you in the future. And you could just, you know, guest on that show anyway. Just get yeah, yourself anytime. that kind of yeah, exactly. if I, if I, If we win in the tournament or keep winning, if we – Start to win in the tournament. I'm sure Dan and I will come on that show, but who knows, man? I'm sure. on a three game losing streak, so who knows what's going to happen with me? Maybe it's time to go. We shall no. see. Oh, all right. It Thanks. We got more to prove, buddy. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. You know how hard it is to drag that boulder up the hill all the time, man. For I seven know, years. I know. It's tough. Uh, it's tough. I love you. It's good to see you, man. Thank you, Smithy. Great to see you too. Good night. Yeah. All right, there you go. Al Smithy, the uh, director from many notable classics uh, that uh, directors don't want to claim. Uh, incredible guy to step in and help us out for that. Uh, <laughs> let's hit some more Streamlabs here. Uh, Samir and, and Super Chat. Samir Tesfai says, my one and only time visiting Chicago was back in 2005, and it so happened to be the weekend of Revenge of the Sith opening. Saw it at the Navy Pier. Wow. Oh, uh, how cool. I've never actually been to that theater. I, there's a like a, a Shakespeare like live theater Thing in there but I'm, i always forget that there's a movie theater on navy pier mm. i'd be very out of my way to go there from work or from home but wow yeah. also are you covered in tourists <laughs> yes it is yes it is are you a yeah. shakespeare person do you like shakespeare are you kind of are you bored no i have a friend that dragged me to something in there at one time and it was it was so enjoyable i think it was like it ended up being like a shakespeare like parody of something oh. or other and it was so fun and ridiculous so yeah they, they do more than just shakespeare stuff but there is a lot of that that happens and it's right a, it's a cool venue that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Clay Major, my boy, send some more money in. Thank you, Clay. It's very kind of you. That's his uh, daughter in there. She just graduated. Uh, Clay Major says, Tarantino threatened to direct a Star Trek movie recently. Threatened. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, God help us. If you could pick one director, living or dead, to helm a Star Wars film, who would it be? Oh, great question. Oh, you're going to have a way better answer to this than I am, John. You should go mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you should, you should only go. <laughs> I don't know. One director, living or dead, to helm a Star Wars film. Who would it be? I think a David Lean Star Wars film would be incredible. Like the guy who did Lawrence of Arabia, the guy who did Bridge on the River Kwai. It would be all these films try to be two hours and a half, two hours and 45 minutes, but they, they just, just stumble all the time. But David Lean could direct an epic and so I would love to see David Lean do an epic of Star Wars uh, and do you know, like two or four, two hour and 45 minute, three hour Star Wars film that would actually keep your attention, actually have incredible battle scenes, actually have some great um, inner exploration of the characters' motivations and the journeys that they're on and the arcs that they would go on. David Lean was incredible with that, with his epic. So I would love to see him uh, tackle it for sure. Uh, what about you, Laura? I just need a woman director in Star Wars at some point. So oh, I would be I would be here for Patty Jenkins. I would be here for Ava DuVernay. I just need I need a woman to direct a Star Wars at some <laughs> point. It, preferably at some point soon. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like Patty Jenkins is like perfect for that, but I also feel like she's probably like sick of the like action fantasy world at this point where she's probably like i need to go do other things so i wouldn't really blame her for that but like ava duvernay would be really awesome and i feel like somebody just recently tagged her on twitter and said something about it and she yeah. had like a sort of like cage like weird sort of like non-answer response right. which i was just like is it coming is it happening like that would be cool so i'm um, yeah i don't your answer is going to be far more educated than mine will for that at any point but i would just love to have a woman direct a star Wars, please i totally respect that absolutely would you see a leia prequel with patty jenkins directing or leia midquel midquel a midquel Something i mean like. i yeah a leia a Leia prequel would be cool. It was right. a good book. The Leia Prince of Alderaan book was yes. very good. It was a good um, book. Yeah. And yeah, so exploring that that time in our life, or even kind of like the time in in between that and the New Hope, like there's there's a little bit of space there. Like 100 percent would be very cool. Okay, I like that. Uh, Sean, are you putting the link in the chat for people to come in live? Uh, I'm seeing a couple of people, but not a lot of people. So look for that uh, uh, link Sean is putting in there. And Clay, if you're still watching, brother man. We haven't talked face to face in a long time, so please jump on that link and come in live and ask a question, bro. Uh, all right, F James Seven Two says, "Would the Clippers be the Sith Lords of the playoffs this year?" Dub Nation next year, hold on to your butts. Yeah, um, Laura, you're a sports aficionado. Tell yeah. me, <laughs> that's where, that's what I'm known for, 100. <laughs> percent 
<laughs> yeah, right. no, this one's definitely for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think the Clippers are feared. You have to be feared to be a Sith Lord, and I don't think the Clippers are feared for so many reasons. Uh, so, no, I wouldn't say they're the Sith Lords of the playoffs. Maybe the Lakers, because certainly Andy, Anthony Davis and uh, LeBron James are feared, and usually you need the rule of two, and LeBron being the old master to Anthony Davis being his Padawan or his recruit to be his evil Padawan as a Sith Lord. I think that's more, uh, and rem- I think that's more appropriate. Remember, Anthony Davis broke the contract with his former team uh, almost illegally so that he could go join the Lakers. That's a Sith move if I've ever seen one. So I would say they're more the Sith Lords. Uh, there you go. All right. So uh, there's your answer, Laura. Mukbang Review says, Outlaw, you are, you are great <laughs> in the showdown, and I hope you never quit. I got, I got, you know, we're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you that right now on my career. Like Laura, you bring something special to the competition. Sure, but. Unlike Laura, uh, I am much older than Laura, so I am ex- <laughs> I get exhausted more easily from it. So, uh, but I appreciate it, Mukbang. Seven years is a long time, man. I'm like I, I I can't imagine. I mean, like sometimes, like at the end of the season, I'm just like, do I do I really want to like expend all this energy and like True. remember all the things that you have to say no to, right? Because you have to stay home and study because if you don't, you're going to make an ass of yourself in front of YouTube. So it's, it's one of those, I can, I can hear how it gets exhausting. I totally Talk. understand it. And it's also because the fans live by your most recent match. They don't, mo- some of the fans rather don't look at the whole, they're always like, well, what have you done lately? What? Oh, well, he's got to do some more study. He's in trouble, blah, blah, blah. So it's all of that. Yeah. Uh, Clay, like my answer, said great uh, big 70 millimeter sweeping epic Star Wars. Love it. Yeah, exactly. But I like Smithy. Smithy said Kurosawa. Come on. Yeah, of course. That makes the most sense considering Kurosawa influenced a lot of what George Lucas did, the Hidden Fortress. For those of you who are Star Wars newbies or maybe Star Wars midbies, uh, uh, go and uh, watch the Hidden Fortress either on the Criterion channel or rent it somewhere to watch. That's You'll see R2-D2 and C-3PO in the two uh, assistance to the main Jedi uh, that um, Toshiro Mifune is playing in the movie. Uh, let's see, yeah, Deborah Chow seems to be the most likely woman to be tapped to direct a Star Wars movie, do you think? Or is she kind of doing the TV series and we're cool with that? You know, I don't know too much about her career. So I'm like, I know that she's done a lot of TV directing. I don't know how much like film directing she's done. And I don't know if Star Wars is really the jumping off point that you want um, when it comes to, you know, directing your first feature film. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, yeah. But she's she's certainly knocked it out of the park with Mandalorian, and I'm yeah. really excited to see what she does with Kenobi. Um, I think it's a good sign that she took one look at the script and decided to go back to square one, bring yeah. everybody back to square. I mean, that says something. Like, I'm sure what they had was great, but the fact that they that she came in and then we shortly after that heard that it was going they were going to be going back to the drawing board with the script. I think that says something yeah. about you know that we can expect great things from her. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. 156 Impulse said, uh, I like episode one and two and I love episode three. My favorite Star Wars is episode five and I like episode seven. Episode eight and nine are okay. Wow, even all of them. Uh, the show is amazing. Laura, question. What is the best Star Wars book to read? I love reading, especially about Vader. Love Vader. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Laura, do you have a favorite Star Wars book to read? You know, I've gone back and reread a couple of them, um, okay. and Lost Stars is by far the one that I recommend. I haven't actually circled back to it. I've only read it the one time, but it's yeah. it's so, so good. Um, and if you're a fan of the original trilogy, it's really great because you just you get to see the entire original trilogy play out, but from a different point of view, yeah. um, basically from these two like star-crossed lovers uh, who don't yeah. really spend a ton of time together in the book. They're mostly kind of like playing for their own sides because one's sure. with the Empire and one's with the Rebellion. Um, but it's it's a fantastic book. It's so, so good. If Don't let the romance component of it scare you off. Um, it's just a fantastic story. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes the original trilogy a lot more fun to go back and rewatch. Um, but I think it sounds like this person's a big prequels fan. Um, so I would have to recommend Master and Apprentice, by, yeah. which is also by Claudia Gray. That's, um, that's going to sort of take you back. I think it's like 10 years before. 10 years sounds like too much, but I think that's right. Before The Phantom Menace. Yeah. Um, and sort of follows Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's journey. Um and it's just a fantastic story. Claudia Gray is like the 
like the peak of Star Wars writers. She's so, so good yeah. um, in terms of the groups of authors that they work with. She's written several Star Wars novels for the canon. The, uh, Master and Apprentice is really good if you're a prequel fan, I think. Yeah, I agree. She, she, she understands how to write for Star Wars, and not a lot of people do. Uh, there are some people who like Chuck Wendig's Aftermath series and some people that don't, you know, but uh, Claudia Gray is pretty much universally beloved as a writer of Star Wars, uh, from what I understand, from what I've read. So, you know, uh, I like her as well. Um, let's see here. Yeah, uh, Sean Barreto. Oh, thank you, Sean. Yeah, Sean, you didn't have to donate like this. It's very kind of you, Sean. He says, I would like to see a Star Wars TV series set in the original trilogy that focuses on other characters but alludes to the events of the original trilogy. I mean, we have that a little bit with Mandalorian, but not to the extent that I think Sean is talking about. Would you want to see that? Or are you one of these people that's like, I really don't want to go back to that time at all. We had fun with it. Let's all move on collectively as a franchise. Yeah, I mean, I so, you know, you have to think about how it's it's a big universe. Like there mm -hmm. could be, you could be on the totally other side of the universe exploring that time period and not interact with any of the characters that we already know. Yeah. Um, so I think if they were willing to take that chance, it could be fun, but... As, as someone who I do enjoy reading Star Wars novels, but the one that I'm reading right now um, at the moment, it hasn't really, I don't know what time period it's really taking place in, but it's not connecting to any of the central storylines that we know of from the films. Yeah. And I'm having a really hard time connecting with it. And so I think <laughs> as much as I want to like move away from those things, I mean, we talked yeah. about like, it'd be really great to get Star Wars movies that are set in the future. It, it really, when it brings it back around to like the characters that we know and the time period we know and the events that we know are taking place, it yeah. just makes it so much easier to connect with. Um, and it, it just makes the story a lot more interesting, I think, just as yeah. a fan um, to add that sort of like depth to the mm -hmm. storyline. So if you can tie it back, like even if it's at the very last, you know, the very end of the movie, the very end of the show, just yeah. tie it back to the, you know, to the, the characters and the time periods and the events that we know, I think that that's a that's a decent strategy. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it can be really hard to try and get into it. <laughs> that's a great point. Absolutely, excellent, excellent point, said Laura. Andrew Hale said, uh, Kel uh, "Kelly, <laughs> he says Kelly." I Boy, answer I'll to that too. It's fine. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Kelly, did you know D Malanta's five pointer droid question against Andres? Insane that it was the only question he didn't know the entire tournament. Also, what's a non-Star Wars franchise that you love we might not know about? Uh, yeah, did you know Dimalanta's five pointer, the droid question? I did. Eight D eight. Yeah, that was um, that was one of those movies. Um, the Return of the Jedi. I remember talking to Shannon ahead of time. I'm like, I spent an unholy amount of time this this go around preparing for questions that could potentially come out of the um, Jabba's palace scene. Mm -hmm. So I was fully like ready and prepared to name like every musician that they asked about um, and getting to know the droids that were in that room was part of it for me. So yeah, oh. I, not to sound like a dick, but I, I did know. <laughs> There's no way to say it without sounding like a dick. I sound like a dick and you can totally believe that, you know, you can totally not believe me and that's fine. No, no, um, I but think it was. I, you'll strike me as a liar. So I think you, you did know it. Um, what's a non-Star Wars franchise that you love that we might not know about? You've spoken about your Harry Potter fandom, I think, but is there another one? Or you can speak about the Harry Potter one even more. What, what, yeah, I mean, Harry Potter was like a huge obsession for me, like before I got into Star Wars. So like my entire adolescence and then even into like college, I was still a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, to the point where like when I was in college and I had the opportunity to study abroad, I like purposely scheduled my trips so that I could go to the um half blood prince premiere in london and like ah. see the stars walk the red carpet and i was nice. just like that was like my happy place um that was a really fun day it was also um a very unpleasant day because it was raining the entire day oh yeah <laughs> so it was just a, it was gross but it was awesome um right. i'll never forget it and for a lot for a lot of reasons but yeah mostly because i was like soaked by the end of it have we talked uh, about the fact that I was a wand keeper at uh, Universal Studios? Have we talked about that? We have. No, right? no, I don't know if we've talked about that. Oh yeah, the um, the land. You've been to the lands, right? The Star Wars land. I haven't been to the I mean, one the in California. I have. I have been to Harry Potter in Florida like twice. Yeah. Okay. So did you go into the show that the wand keepers do, where they pick the person and they like the do the tricks? Ollivander. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I did for two years at Universal Studios and here in LA. That was like oh, an dope. So like you were you were Ollivander? <laughs> yeah, I was Ollivander. Uh yeah. That's doing, the, doing the British accent. The only the only Latino on the roster. So it was it was a accomplishment. It was a pride. And it was a love lot of fun. That. And people love that. I mean, people are 
I know people love Star Wars, but the Harry Potter thing, people like cry, you know, when yeah. they're selected. And I remember one time I had a woman come in and I selected her. And it was just like the first few weeks I was doing it. Um, and when it was over, her sisters came up to me and they were all just bawling. And I was like, oh my God, are you, you know, you have to stay in character. Like, are you all right? This is okay. And they were just like, <laughs> yeah, you don't understand. Our mom paid for this trip for all of us to come here before she died of cancer. And so for you selecting her, it was like uh, our mom was working through you to select our sister. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, oh, that's heavy. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> my dad passed from cancer. So when they said that, I was like, huh? Yeah. Huh? You know, I was like, okay, like, thank you so much. Character, character, character. <laughs> character. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Close the door, please. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was basically that. So, yeah. Oh, craziness. that's so touching. I love you know Harry Potter fans. We're we're uh, we're an insane group. I, it's not a group that I'm like fully involved with, um, and my heart's not really in it anymore. But when I was when I went to the theme park in Florida when it opened, I mean, I went six months after it opened. So this is well before they expanded oh, wow. it into yeah, yeah. Universal. This was like yeah. yeah, just the Island of Adventure stuff, and uh, it was. I mean, like I remember walking through like underneath the. The, the Diagon Alley, you know, yeah. arch and then like coming around the corner and then you see the castle. And I just remember like, I, I burst in tears, I'm sure at the time. Like it wow. was, I mean, it was the same thing when I was going to Batu la back in February, January of this year. Like yeah. when we were, we were at the very front of the line walking into Batu and I was just like, we were doing the real slow. It was very <laughs> quiet. Like it was very ordered and it was necessary that everyone stay in their spot. Um, to you know, walk around and get to the Falcon, and we were right in front. I was just like, wow. like quietly crying as we were walking around the park. I was like, holy shit, it's real! <laughs> like it's yeah, uh, but yeah. I mean, in terms of other franchises for me, yeah, Harry Potter was a big one. Um, BBC yeah. Sherlock, uh, that was a oh, big fandom for me nice, too. I was nice. like super into that show before it sucked. Um, when in season four, it was yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, they were just like, well, this is collect a paycheck. Let's just collect yeah. the paycheck. Yeah, they were no one's no one's heart was in it at that point yeah. anymore. It, when it was really too bad because the first yeah. three seasons were like primo yeah, TV. They're stellar. Cumber Cumberbatch had mentally gone. You're right. You're absolutely right on that. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's see. Okay, uh, uh, Andrew. How says it? Yeah, it okay, uh, Wayne Edwards says hello, Laura Roca. Hey, great work on the Jedi way. Oh, thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Uh, it is like a philosophy class through a Star Wars lens. I think that was our point. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were going for. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Wayne. The episode about courage was entertaining and thought provoking. The breakdown of Han Solo's journey was moving for me. Well, yeah, certainly. I, you know, I, I think it took a lot of courage for him to confront that with his child. So, uh, yeah, cool. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, appreciate it. Let's bring in some people live, Laura. Let's uh, rip through these people who've been waiting for us. Uh, are you cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, what's up, Adrian? Uh, you're on here. What's going on? Let me switch the brand so people can see you. Uh, can you hear us? Do you have the mic on? I can, I can hear you. All right. What's what's up? A nice haircut. I like it. Oh, Looks thank good. you. I only had it done today. Yeah, I know. I could tell. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Laura. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you, too. A lot of strong beard game with Outlaw Nation. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, you know, when you were talking about your director, uh, directing Star Wars, the first name that jumped into my head was Ridley Scott. Oh, interesting. Ridley Scott Star Wars. Um, I know he's a bit older now, but back when he yeah. was in his heyday making Alien, he probably could have done it. Could have done the horror Star Wars. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martian was only five years ago, and that's a damn good movie, so he could still direct a movie. What do you think, Laura? Is it? Uh, are you not a Ridley Scott guy, uh, person? No, unfortunately, I'm not super familiar with the, with uh, with their work. But I, uh, I, I mean, the idea of having the person that directed Alien, because I have seen that uh, yeah. direct the Star Wars, that's super appealing. That's I, yeah. I love that idea because yeah, the idea of bringing anything jump scare related into Star Wars is like <laughs> I'm here for that. Like it doesn't even have to be horror. Like that seems like a reach to do like a Star Wars horror film. But like bring on those jump scares because I want that in my Star Wars. That would yeah. be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also did Blade Runner. You haven't seen Blade Runner? No, I haven't. <laughs> it's not my favorite film of all time, John. Yeah, that's what I, was, my, I love that movie. It, it, was, my top it, it was made when I was born, so I, oh, I haven't I really I watched it. Yeah. Uh, my, quick, my quick question is, okay. quick question. out of all the, all, all the people's originals, whatever, what was your favorite lightsaber duel out of them, Laura? 
if you can pick one? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I there's a really, really good one in the Clone Wars, but I I'll have to give it to Vader. It's I mean, it's not even a lightsaber battle. It's just Vader. But I huh. love the Vader scene in Rogue One. I know a lot of people call it fan service and thought it was over the top. I was so freaking here for it, though. Um, it's so good. And if you ever get a chance to go to the void, um, with the virtual reality locations and do the uh, the Star Wars virtual reality, whatever it is that they do, um, there's an there's like an amazing uh, component to that where like Vader comes into the game and wow. is like basically coming at you like Rogue One style in the hall. Like it's it's insane. It's so freaking cool. So I do love the Vader. Um, I do love the Vader scene in Rogue One, but the in terms of like lightsaber duels, there's one in the Clone Wars that's pre Vizsla um, versus Maul, I think. Okay. Yeah, is it Maul? That's right. And it's just like the the fight choreography in it is so freaking amazing. Um, think like what we got in season seven of the Clone Wars between like Maul and Ahsoka and how cool that was. Like this was like this was sort of the like the the before version of that. And it was really amazing what they were able to do in animation and how, um, how great star Wars and how great like yeah. lightsaber duels translate to animation is just really impressive. I know. I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you though. I'm not the world's biggest star Wars fan. I've seen uh -huh. all the movies and the first season of star Wars levels, but it's generally not my goal. Go to movies. My go to movies are the star Trek movies. So uh -huh. I don't really know that lot about the star Wars. Yeah, oh, fair enough. That's all right. Teach their own. Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what about you, John? What was your favorite uh, lightsaber duel? Uh, uh, you know what? And uh, Laura might hate me for this one, but I think the duel between Kenobi and Maul and Two Sons. That's my favorite one because it is the most uh, honest to an actual samurai sword fight. These were not long extended fights that went on uh, in multiple levels off barriers and what have you. Samurai fights, if you see the end of um, uh, Sanjuro or the end of Yojimbo, these are quick, or sort of Doom even, these are quick fights that are over. And I loved the way that ended. And I loved Maul saying to Kenobi at the end as he's holding him, like, the child you're protecting, well, he will avenge us all for what the Emperor has done to all of us. So there was, there's more involved in that fight. And I go back and watch that episode of Rebels like, I don't know, once every couple of months. Uh, I'd certainly go back and watch that because I love that fight, but everything around the fight and the history of Kenobi and Maul and what that leads to uh, when you factor in the Qui-Gon Jinn stuff, it's just great. Well, my favorite was the one between Anakin Skywalker and Oberon Kenobi. Oh, at I the did. End of the Sith. Yeah, right, Mustafa. I love, I, I love that one. I watched the documentary within the minute oh. and what went into making that minute of Fight choreography was amazing. Absolutely, agreed. Yeah, it's certainly like the most iconic duel, maybe of all of Star Wars. Certainly of the prequel trilogy. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah, it really was like the defining thing of the prequels was that what they were able to do with fight choreography in those yeah. films it was just fantastic. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to say quickly. I'm a connoisseur of action films anyway, so when I see a good put together fight scene or action scene, I love it, and I am actually a big fan of that fight scene in. Depends on the Sith, anyway. Okay. All right, cool. John, I'm sorry to keep you. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you staying up. Thank I know you. it's like uh, four in the morning, so I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Four o'clock, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Oh, my brother. gosh. Thanks for I, being I, with I, us. I, yeah, I, I went to sleep at 10 a.m. and woke up just about 10 minutes before your show, so I could get on. Oh, perfect. I appreciate yeah. it, man. You look yeah. good. I'll do that from now on. Take right. care. You too, Bradrian. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. I like the baby Yoda's is Nonica. That was cool. Um, I was bringing <laughs> Brendan. Uh, can you stay a few minutes past Laura? Or do you have to go at right at eight? No, oh, I'm not in any hurry. Okay. Okay. Brendan. What's Hello. up? Good to see you. Hey John, I just saw a uh, sword of doom for the first time. You loved it. Didn't you? It was good. Hi yeah. Laura. Hello. Good I see you've you. got a couple of solid star Wars posters back yep, there. Yep, Very yep. impressive. Um, you know, you mentioned Kurosawa. Drunken angel is an amazing film. It is. Drunken Angel is fantastic. It's more uh, it's of a modern a film, not a samurai film. So that's but you're cool. right about the lightsaber duel in Twin Suns being like Twin the one Sun. in uh, in Sanjuro. Laura's so kind not to correct me. You can correct me, Laura. <laughs> I feel like I did once before and I felt bad afterwards. So I was like, I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> so I guess my question is, it's or at least an observation, 
a lot when the prequels came out, especially episode one, Sun fans were not too pleased with the political talk. Oh yeah, right. and yet it's funny because here we are, twenty-one years later, and what's been the talk of the town every day for the past three years? Yeah, right. four years has been politics. Exactly. So I, I think that I don't think it's necessarily commenting on now; it's commenting on human nature. But do you feel that the politics in the prequels has actually aged well? Maybe when we first saw it, we didn't like it, but now it's... Do you think we look at it differently now? Interesting. What? That's really interesting, and I would have to... like. I It honestly kind of makes me want to go back and watch the prequels and kind of think about it from that point of view, because I feel like the last time I've watched the prequels, it's like strictly for trivia, and it's like yeah. looking for the, the, you know, the facts and figures of the, of the films, but I think that's a really good point, and I know that, like, I mean, I, I talked about how, you know, my friend Alice is such a huge fan of the prequels, and one of the things that she really likes about it, actually, is the politics. She likes that they kind of dive into that. Um, and I think that it really says something interesting about, you know, where George Lucas was as a filmmaker at that time, because people always talk about how there weren't any politics in the original trilogy, and there, I mean, it was totally uh, a political statement. He was writing statement. it during Nixon and Watergate. And yeah. yeah, of course. Exactly, yeah. yeah, and so even though it wasn't, like, in-your-face political, um, you know, it was still a very, they were still very political films at that time, and even yeah. now, and I think the fact that George Lucas was like, you know what, we're just going to put this way more out in the open, we're going to put it more on the surface, I, it was an interesting choice, and I think it made it a, a it made the films a lot more interesting for a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Yeah. What do you oh. think there, Roka? Yeah, I think so too. I think, you know, um, if I ever can get past the first 45 minutes again. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we should start an hour into the movie and go from there. But yeah, certainly yeah. I do remember Revenge of the Sith and, and um, Attack of the Clones having a lot of the, you know, the, the Senate, the idea of one person having one face uh, and presenting a certain – uh, side of it and then marshalling people and tricking people into believing a certain thing. So by the time the turn happens, they're all in, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound in that situation. And it's too hard to turn back around and stop it from happening. And then seeding control, right? Doesn't she have that line? This is how democracy dies yeah. with, with, with applause I mean, or with under applause, which is like when you watch certain people saying certain things in our political sphere and you watch the fervent applause yeah. that accompanies it from the slavish devotees of that person, you're just like, what is going on here? Like what kind of mad? you want to take C-SPAN and play the Soviet national anthem over it whenever the Republicans talk. <laughs> oh my God! Whoa! Oh yeah, wow! I went there. David, I went there. Well, don't look up the Charlie Kirk stuff. It'll give Sean you shade. Always, Sean was always waiting for me to say something snarky. So yeah, right. <laughs> there you go, Sean. Okay, well, thank you, Roka, and thank you, thank Laura. You. Great to yeah. see you, brother. Good to see you too. I look forward to seeing you on the uh, hangout or listening to the hangout tomorrow night on the Discord. Yep. I'll be Respect there. For Thanks, May the force be with you. you too, brother. <laughs> uh, all right, let's bring in 156 Impulse. Uh, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Oh, Guatemala Day. On, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on, guys? Um, so, question. If someone is new to Star Wars, do you start from episode one no, or from episode four? Because my best friend started watching Star Wars. He started from episode four, and he... Very happy he did because I know I had, uh, friends that started from episode one and didn't have the same experience when the whole big scene with Luke found out that Beta was his father. I would I remember watching that scene. I was okay. But I want to say I was seven, and to this day I'm oh. like still mind blown to this day. So one or episode okay. four. Laura? I mean, my I would always go with release order. I, that would be, I think, definitely the way that I would recommend doing it. I think that's really the best way. Because you're, you're you're right. You're totally not getting the same experience of the I am your father reveal if you've already seen the prequels. And I think that, I mean, that, that line's iconic. Everyone knows where it's from. And even people who haven't watched Star Wars, I think at this point, are familiar enough with the storyline where they kind of know that it's coming when it comes. Um, but I think it's still an important part of the Star Wars experience. I would still go release order for the at least when it comes to the prequels uh, or the, in the original trilogy. Yeah, yeah. I would start with definitely, I would definitely. start with four. Absolutely, I wouldn't start with one because mm -hmm. if one was like 
stellar. And as I just said, I can't get past the first quarter. Oh my God, yeah. uh, I, I would not start with one. I wouldn't because especially if your you friend is like a person of color. Yeah, I mean, this like all of it. Jar Jar, Watto, the, the Chinese uh, accented guys up in the ship. Yeah. I mean, if your friend's a person of color, it's going to be like a neon sign of how, like, what was going on? <laughs> you know something? George you know, Lucas, I was watching, was working um, out? I was watching an old video, Clyde video, and the late John Schnapp actually said the same thing you did. He said all oh, these yeah. stereotypes. is like, what's going on? He's like, this isn't. Right. Right. You <laughs> so dropped that in 2020? Well, they would set oh your film on God. fire. They would set your film on fire. <laughs> this is no lie. Uh, uh, also, you, <laughs> you want to uh, vocal. Um, you like a Latino as a Jedi? Imagine a Latino Sith Lord. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. I'm cool with that. I'm cool yeah, with that. That's too. I'm cool with that too. How about a Latino Jedi who becomes a Sith Lord through a, through two seasons of a show? That I'd like as well. See, we we've never seen. I mean, I saw we saw the Anakin one, but we don't really see because in, in season seven of Clone Wars we see him turn through Ahsoka Tano's. Uh, uh, I don't know, hearing the words, hearing it all happen, rather than visually seeing him uh, turn. And I don't like the way it's done in 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 obviously in the. Um, you know, whatever is the third film. Uh, uh, I don't like the way it's done there. So I'd rather see it uh, progress over two seasons or three seasons where you feel the tragedy of that happening. You feel it more believably than you do in the prequel trilogy, in my opinion. That would be fun to watch. So there you go. Uh, you know, all right. Thanks, bud. Is how many seasons? Actually, one more question. Uh, last se uh, how many um, seasons for Mandalorian have when they hit episode seven? How many do you think it's going to have? Like five or six? Five or six seasons. Do you think it's gonna hit episode seven? Because it's a still oh. a time lap from from six to oh, I episode seven. Like how many seasons do you guys think it's gonna have? I don't know. I think four. I don't know if it, I think it, it's not, probably not gonna go beyond four. I yeah. think that tends to be a magic number when it comes to TV shows of this caliber and um and, and kind of what they're doing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended at four. Um, right. It would be interesting, though, that, since you bring it up, to do a time jump at some point, because we know that season two is going to pick up exactly where season one left off. Right. Um, and, you know, we're still, what, 20 something years away from from The Force Awakens. So, yeah. it, you know, even, maybe they would even do the thing that Rebels did where there was an epilogue and they jumped forward into the future right. at some point to kind of see where they end up. Because I mean, we do see a Razor Crest with the Resistance fleet. Yeah. Uh, on Exegol. So, you yeah. know, if we jump forward in time to that moment to see what happens at that time, that would be kind of a cool tie in to the to the movies if you want to tie that back. Cool. Yeah. I think that's probably the best. All right. Way. Oh, wrong. What Laura said. Yeah. Everything Laura said. <laughs> Get Thanks it together, Roka. Right. You're oh, a professional. I know. I apologize. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. Bye, Happy Guatemala Day, man. Bye. What's your ghost, hombre? Uh, all right, level two trading. What's up, level two? Good to see you, man. Hey guys. Um, sorry about the audio again. Um, two questions really. I see everybody taking four and five, but I just have to. Um, uh, Timothy Zahn or Claudia Gray coming back to the books. Um, would you ever see them writing or writing a screenplay for one of the movies? And um, yeah, that's the question. I didn't catch the question. What was the about? What was it about Timothy Zahn? Um, yeah, if they could write a screenplay for one of the movies. Oh, would you like, like him to see write, uh, the screen, write a screenplay? Also, for yeah, I agree. To do an adaptation because, like, Tron, I really love the character of Tron. To see an adaptation of Tron or someone similar to that, yeah, in the movies would be great. So a Thrawn, Thrawn character, uh, uh, Thrawn in the movies in a feature film. Uh, with Timothy Timothy Zahn doing the screenplay is what you're asking. Yeah. What about you, Laura? Would you be down with that? I think I'd be down for it, but I just said this on Force Toast, I think, in the most recent episode, where I think Timothy Zahn is writing uh, Star Wars books for Star Trek fans. Like, it just seems a little bit more like wow. it, it's like a totally different universe. That's is like what is sort of happening in the Thrawn universe. But it's cool. It's just so different to the point where like it almost doesn't feel like Star Wars to me sometimes, wow. um, especially with the newest one. Uh, but the, I love the the obviously I'm a huge fan of Star Wars Rebels. So I love that Thrawn tied into all of that. Um, yeah. And obviously we know that they have. Pierce Brosnan in mind for casting Thrawn. So I, mean, I feel like they have, uh, I feel like, you know, that it's there. I, I wonder if Timothy's on whatever, you know, B 
be ambitious enough to take on screenwriting as a task. It, it, yeah. it seems like something that would translate, but I don't know. You never um, know. But it's one of those things with with Zahn and with uh, with with Thrawn is that you know Thrawn's he's very much like the Sherlock Holmes of Star Wars, um, and you kind of get to see the weird logic and the weird paths he takes to get to the conclusions that he makes, and it's a lot of fun to go on that ride with him. Um, and I I sometimes wonder you know obviously we've seen Sherlock Holmes on screen a ton and they've made it work, but with all of the intricate, weird detail that goes into writing the Thrawn books, I wonder how well some of that would translate to screen, but I would 100% like be down to see Thrawn on screen at any point. I yeah. just love the idea. And especially if it was uh, Lars Mikkelsen playing him. I mean, yeah. I, you, you can give me Pierce Brosnan if you want, that's fine, but I love, love, love uh, Lars Mikkelsen's take on the character in Rebels, and I think that he would totally work for live action too. Yeah, and if you've seen Lars Mikkelsen in House of Cards play essentially the Putin character for two seasons, yep, he is absolutely stellar at yes. that. Uh, I would be. I mean, I would argue that he's even better than his brother, and his brother's great, but I would argue he's even better. So I would love to see him as Thrawn. I agree with Laura. Uh, cool. Thanks, level two. Yeah, um, just one um, other thing. Um, okay. Laura, I didn't pin you for someone in the financial side. Um, I'm a trader. I trade from home also. I'm playing active management or passive management side of the business. Ooh, God, I don't even know what the like difference is. I guess probably more active management. <laughs> I'm not sure because I'm not even sure what passive management is. No, but I'm like I have like a direct report who I you know we we interact you know regularly with and even is which is weird in a virtual environment. And not at all something we're used to, but yeah, I, I think yeah, the fact that I don't know the difference probably says something about uh, <laughs> yeah, the type yeah. of management that I'm doing. But I, I guess maybe active. <laughs> yeah, John, um, she would not be available tomorrow. Tomorrow is a big day for traders. All right, <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, man. Thanks, right, guys. Thanks for having on. Take care, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, F. James, I want to bring you in, but you're not wearing a shirt. Put on a shirt, F. James. Are you wearing a shirt? <laughs> Put on a shirt for the love of God, son. We got a lady present. This anyway. is a safe space. <laughs> Put on a shirt. Look, he's scrambling around to put on a shirt. I Look at it. Look, come on. I don't want to see that. All right, there we go. Ronan Unchained, <laughs> what's up, dude? You're jumping in while F. James finds a shirt. Uh, Hello, John. Hello, Rob. Thanks for having me. Um, How are you? I, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, damn, that teaser, man. A month and away, and they showed us glimpses of it without spoiling anything. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel that th whatever we've heard in terms of rumors and fan casting is that don't show us nothing. Right. If we already know about it, keep us at bay until the episodes come out. Do you guys expect them to do anything like that? Or do you guys wouldn't mind seeing Ahsoka or Rex show up in the next trailer? Because they're going to release another trailer. You know, Rex, I wouldn't mind. And I feel like yeah. almost like like I almost wouldn't mind with like Bo Katan either. Ahsoka, oh, yeah. I I do not want to see Ahsoka in a teaser trailer yeah. or a trailer. Yeah. I do, I don't want it. And you know, I, Alex Damon was talking about this earlier today of like, you know, when they did season one of The Mandalorian, there was a like a full length, longer length trailer that came out about two weeks before season one premiered. So right. there's is I you know, I guess the question is like, will we get like a more full trailer um, before season two airs? And I I think that's uh, totally up in the air. If they left us with what we have now, I would be totally yeah. fine with it. I per yeah. would prefer to see less than more. Um, I think that I might be in the minority with that. I saw an awful lot of complaining on Twitter about really? it today. Um, but yeah, I was like fully into the fact that we didn't really, we didn't, we're getting vibes of what to expect in season yeah. two. We're not getting a ton of detail. And yeah. I am fully on board for that. I wish more film trailers did of that. That's yeah. what breaks my heart about the whole Ahsoka Rex thing. That it's like it would have been nice to not know any of that. And next oh. thing you know, you see two people walking in the episode and be like, wait, they did it. They're actually making it more interconnected than what the movies are doing right now, even though I like the sequel trilogy. But um John, I have this question for you specifically. And all you can chime in if you want. Uh we I we vibed a lot of it a lot during season one because we kept tweeting about your know, Jimbo. Uh, yeah, Lone from Cobb. Oh my God, I can't, I can't live down that tweet. One stupid word. My life's been a living hell ever since. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and what I was wondering is, and also to you, Laura, is there any other genre or sun genre that you would love for Mandalorian to explore? I know for me at least, the prisons uh, episode with uh, Bill Burr and um, uh, uh, 
the, the whole the whole uh, prison episode. I thought it was very much a John Carpenter episode. It's not full on Escape from New York or Assault on Precinct 13, but is there a soft genre you would want to see? Personally, I would want to see more noir in Mandalorian. Yeah. I love I love noir, so I would say yes. I'd love to see a noir episode of the Mandalorian. It fits the Mandalorian to have noir. And there were shades at times throughout the uh, season where there were some some scenes that felt like noir, some of the darker scenes, some of the more mysterious stuff for sure, some of the back uh, stabbing, the betrayals. Uh, throughout yeah. um i would disagree with you with the uh, that is not a that's not escape from anything that was a slapstick laurel and hardy comedy that was terrible i hated that episode i was so oh, mad at that episode oh, because i defended every other episode when people are like going uh you know posting about uh, you know, oh this feels wrong but even the amy zanaris one i defended but that was comical because they were such a comical bunch of people that him beating them up and defeating them and sticking them in the prison was no sense of accomplishment. It's like Janine played the war father. There's no real sense of accomplishment here. That was pretty much a done deal in my opinion, you know? So uh, I just, in my overall, I just didn't feel like that was what I wanted to see from, from that Mandalorian thing. So I don't know. That's, how valid. That's valid. At least. I don't know. What do you think, Laura? I feel like with that episode that they were like almost trying to do like a Bad Batch thing where they're like, let's introduce yeah. these characters that we think are super cool. Yeah. And then like, if people like them, we'll spin it off. And then oh, everyone yeah. was kind of just like, hey, <laughs> uh, what were you trying to do here? And I, yeah. I kind of, I get that component. Like I said, I really like the music in that episode. I will go back and like oh, look yeah. at the soundtrack for that sure. episode specifically because I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think it's always fun to see. Like, I'm not sure how her name's pronounced. Is it Natalia Tena? Tena? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's I from love Harry Potter love, as well. Yeah, yeah I Potter, love seeing yeah, her yeah. in Star Wars. Um, and I love seeing her in anything. So I thought that was I really too. in her. She even if she kind of plays the same character sometimes and stuff. Um, yeah. She plays a lot of weirdos, which I, and she just yes. seems to have be having a lot of fun when she does it. So I always enjoy seeing her on screen. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, we kind of talked about this earlier, but I love I, I love a good jump scare. Like I'm not really a big horror movie person, but I love a good thriller. And yeah. so if you were to like kind of dive into that a little bit more and give a little bit more of that in The Mandalorian, I would not have a problem with it. I'm down with I that. I know John didn't like the episode, but at least for me, I got a little bit of Halloween vibes with Mando. The way the lights would turn down, yeah. he would come inside. I felt a little bit of the shape feeling there. But were they running uh, around going, oh my God, there's a guy coming after yeah. us. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Know, I, don't, I, don't blame I don't blame you. You know, a little Boston accident in Star Wars wouldn't hurt. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't have, I'm sorry, I can't. I know people were giving me shit for that when I posted about it, but I was like, I can't. It takes me completely out of Star Wars to hear the Boston accent. <laughs> it is so regionally American. It just takes me out of it, man. Before I take off and you let anyone else jump yeah, in. Yeah, we got um, we got a bunch of people waiting. What's up? The uh we're getting books and comic books. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mind that, and I always thought that if we weren't gonna get that many seasons of Mando, that a comic book series like Low Wolf and Cub, like Lady Snowbud, yeah, would make perfect sense to connect or be like, You want to know more about the adventures? Here's more to it. Are you guys excited about it? Or do you guys think that it's like okay, we're probably not focusing too much on the show, or do you think it's fine to expand it on both books and comic books? Mm. No. I'm not a big comics person, so um, it's unlikely okay. that I'll end up pursuing those, but I do, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big reader. And so I really um, am looking forward to the Mandalorian novel that we're gonna get. Um, I totally didn't understand what it was gonna be when they first announced it. For some reason, I interpreted it as being a novelization of season one, which I was like, why are they releasing that <laughs> while season two is airing? <laughs> um, I was very confused, but yeah, it's a totally separate story. It's not yeah. the it's not related to season one at all, no. um, allegedly. No. But I'm I'm excited to see, I'm excited to read that. I think it'll be fun because I kind of like the idea of being able to like have a little bit more working knowledge of like the Mandalorian in this era that we're in because it is a mostly unexplored era of the Star yeah. Wars universe. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Agreed. Cross mediums. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for welcome, Sealy. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you, brother. Thanks Dang. for coming in, dude. And shout out to your little baby Yoda there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's nice. so cute. So cute. All right, Jeff James, you put in a shirt, so you get one question. Yeah, all right. What's up? <laughs> all right. Can you hear me? Yeah, totally. Yes, we can. Okay. 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 So my big thing is I would love them to do a what if, like uh, Claudia Gray Lost Stars. You know, a Timothy Zahn original, you know, Jedi Academy, like the Corillian thing, like Legends. 
Like, I mean, that would be awesome. And okay. for, for Roka, since you don't give this option on uh, game time, Dub Nation, God damn it, Steph Clay Dre, Wiggins is the fourth best player in the second pick of the draft. We okay. are coming for that title next year. God yeah, damn it. All right. All right. Respect. You. I mean, what What the hell? You've been in a dynasty for the last few years. So, I mean, what year yeah. you can take off? Five years. Five years. This is all yeah. we've had. This is all we've had. Still, so, I mean, you still we're going to enjoy this run. Well, we're going to enjoy this run till it ends. I mean, you know how long the dubs have sucked? I mean, this I is know, it. I know. I have. This, I know. This, this is it. We are going to enjoy this run until the very end. I mean, we're going to roll with this thing. All right. Respect <laughs> Anyways, that, James. But, but Claudia Gray. I mean, Lost Stars animated series. I'm just saying. I'm oh. just saying. That, that would be awesome. Well, Claudia yeah. Gray, Lost Stars. <laughs> they could definitely do... Um, I love the idea of Lost Stars being anything made into a series because you could totally do like a more episodic story with it. And obviously Star Wars animation rules. So yeah, I would go. be as long as they stick with I that mean, 3D animation, not super into the 2D that they went with, yeah. with Resistance. But that's okay. just me. Well, I mean, like, like the whole what if. Legends is what if. I mean, if Legends is going to be what if, we could do animated animation. That's what Definitely. I'm saying. Okay. Awesome. Why not? Good to see you, F. James. Peace. <laughs> there you go. Dub Brother. Nation, there you go. Dub Nation, I give you some love. Well, you uh, you're wizards. I mean, don't 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 be that nice. <laughs> don't even start. Don't be, that don't, nice. start. don't be that nice, deal. I feel like Steve, or, yeah, Steve Curl and Anchorman, where he's like, I don't know what we're yelling about. <laughs> <laughs> That's me That's right awesome. now. <laughs> uh, all right, Daniel. Hey, good. What's up, man? Hey, guys, please have one question. One question only. We're we're way past the time with Laura, so she's very kind to stay on. So, Daniel, what do you, what do you got? Plus, I need to eat dinner. God damn it. All right, Daniel, what do you got? <laughs> I really wanted to get into my life story with you guys. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> so What's up? Uh, uh, speaking of my life story i'm a prequels i, I was raised on the prequels that was oh, my sorry. first introduction into the world of star wars right I, I still love it i it, it, i didn't it didn't turn me off in All any right. way well i was like seven so i just you, you know those lightsaber fights were those not. movies were made for you so that's yeah. okay yeah I that's, fantastic. True. that's true i can't 100 percent agree with that because those trade federation conversations are pretty fucking complicated for a seven-year-old to grasp so i think it was like a balance of both they're trying to appeal to the adults that are in the theater taking their seven-year-olds to see the movie maybe it's kind of right. like the disney thing where they uh they, they want to make jokes for the adults but instead of jokes you know trade federation <laughs> yeah right it's a fair trade-off <laughs> or is nope. it <laughs> no pun intended. uh all right what's your that's all your, i got that's it that's what we have to tell you <laughs> Sort of advocate a little bit for the prequels. All right. Respect. I respect. There are some great scenes. There are certainly some great scenes in the prequels. And as I said, the visuals are fantastic. The world that George Lucas builds within the prequels is absolutely awesome to watch and uh, see the movement. Certainly very futuristic. A lot of Macquarie influence as well. So it's good to see that. But uh, I thought the storylines just didn't quite get there. But I respect it. I respect the seven-year-old enjoying that. So, all right. Thanks, Daniel. Good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, all right, Cinema Gorilla, real quick. Uh, giving some love to the ally. Ah, there it is. There hey it guys, is. Quick, uh, there he is. Star Wars, but Laura, <laughs> I love you. And I don't know anything about Star Wars, but really quick to show you a poster from the 40th anniversary screening of The Empire Strikes Back. I got invited by Disney last week. They nice. Had the Rose Bowl. Let me show you the poster. Oh my God, I love this poster. I've seen about? pictures of this online. I just love the, like, it's so clean. Yeah. And like the clean, like sort of lines. Oh my God. It's so good. Right. The little bit of red. That's just a little perfect. You know, that's the one on my wall behind me, right? Like the one I just got framed, right? Oh my God. Yeah. 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 You guys it have is. the same one. Oh yeah. my God. That's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely the same one. Oh, beautiful. I ordered it on bottleneck and then had it framed. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Bro, perfect. Oh, look at oh, my yeah. cousin Max. He's Puerto Rican too. Uh, he's, the, he's brown. I'm proud to represent. What's up, bro? <laughs> Hi, Max. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, respect. Oh, there we oh, go. There it yeah. goes. All right, thanks so much. <laughs> Uh, all right, Tushka. I'm not gonna say that. I don't know what that means. Tushka, what's up, dude from Oklahoma? Say hi to Laura. Turn on your microphone, fool. Oh no, we can't hear you. He's gonna do it. Tushka. Oh boy. There we go. There, we there go. he is. Roka. You figured it out. Good job. 
why'd you mute me? It's smushmushins. <laughs> no. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, uh, I had a meeting. I completely missed the whole interview. I'm looking uh, forward to watching it back, Laura. Well, you'll enjoy it. It was good times. Do you really like Star Wars? Do cool. I really like it? Like, yeah. <laughs> why why aren't you asking John, who's been knocking the prequels for the last? I guess you didn't know that he's been known because you haven't been here. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> no, I, I, already. Wow. I think it's I think it's okay. It's yeah. just fine. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, actually, no. My real question is, uh, how are you liking this interview format? Oh, like, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think it's great. Awesome. This is, and I love like bringing in other people. It's fun to see people besides John because I talk to him all the time, and it's usually just us. So yeah. this is no, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the video, the whole thing of video overall is all new for me, so I'm still kind of getting used to getting used to that in the nuance that comes along with that and trying to figure out what I look like when I'm sitting and it's just weird, but I'm, I'm getting used yeah. to it and it's a lot of fun. It's nice to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. Well, and, and we definitely appreciate you doing this because I, I know with, uh, with, uh, you know, the Jedi, uh, we would love to have that, but, um, but yeah, we definitely love having you tonight. Thank you so much. And we hope that we were somewhat moderately respectful and oh, yeah. entertaining. Um, I, I usually do a deep research dive and I get everything <laughs> wrong. But I, I wasn't able to do it tonight. But it's true. It's yeah. true. So thank you for having me. I mean, everyone's been amazing. This has been a really awesome. fun night. It's been great kind of getting to know everybody. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much. You guys have a good night, though. Awesome. You too, thank Josh. you. I'll see you in the replay. Brother. In the replay. Yeah, watch the replay. Leave a comment, too, brother. Okay. We'll do. Good to see you, brother. He's always awesome. He's a big supporter of the Outlaw Nation. Him and uh, so many people come in and have a good time. So I appreciate him giving you a, a, a what's up. Um, all right, Brian Brawler, real quick. Roka, have you seen the Roroni Kenshin live action movies? There are some great sword fights in it. Uh, no, I haven't, but I will make a note of that for sure. I do love me a great sword fight. Uh, Muckbang Review says, how can you keep all that trivia in your head? LOL. Would you <laughs> ever be a manager in the Schmodown if not? play again thanks i think is he asking you i think he's asking you right maybe um i i can't ever see myself being a manager that doesn't oh yeah I, I i don't know how the managers do it because when i think about what i have to go through to like write a promo and edit it and write it and rewrite it and redo yeah. it and shoot it 30 times just to try and get it kind of to make it look kind of good um, and then put my hope and faith that, you know, the other people that work on Shmodown stuff will be able to make it look really good. And they often do um, because yeah. they're amazing. I can't imagine having to do that for every player on my team, for every match. That sounds so exhausting to me. What the managers have to go through in the oh, Shmodown, yeah. it's like so underappreciated, I think. I mean, like yeah. you see what they do on screen and it's amazing. But like what all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. It's so much work for them, or at least it's supposed to be. Maybe it's not yeah. for all of them, but it's a lot of work for Shannon. She puts a lot of work into oh, it and yeah. cares about it a lot. Um, and, you know, having gotten to know her this last, like, couple of months and the last, gosh, it hasn't been a year yet, but it feels like it's been nine years uh, through this <laughs> pandemic. Um, I mean, I, it's just, it, it's really admirable what they do and the amount of work that they put into it. Um, and I think that, it's, yeah underappreciated it's not something i ever see myself doing in terms uh, of how i get stuff into my head i have my um i have methods uh that shall remain secret because they've been serving me well oh. and i don't want to share them with anyone else my own, <laughs> my own teammates don't know all of the methods that i use to study they know wow. some of them but okay yeah wow your own teammates you see uh that's what happens at the schmodown even when you're in a faction you hide some things from each other because you might face each other down the road so you don't really get the full support of the faction when you're playing and uh it's so weird i mean especially when the fence stock exchange i'll be honest with you it's it, it has been good and bad at the same time because we're all vying for those belts and at some point we all might be up to get a shot at those things so nobody wants to give away their secrets to each other yet we want to help each other we just can't fully help each other so we can't really prepare each other to be as prepared as possible uh, which sucks, you know, which sucks. Yeah. So that's the I overall. mean, fortunately with Star Wars is that it's, it's the league is the division is such a different beast than yeah. I think the other divisions that like, even the stuff that I use to study, I don't even know if it would be helpful for yeah. anybody that's not studying Star Wars. Um, Cause it's just, <laughs> it's just so it's different. You know, yeah. you have to dive in a lot deeper and you've got a much more limited scope of, you know, the things that you need to study. 
um, yeah. you know, exactly what's going to come up in each match. So it's, it's, it's easier to be prepared in that aspect, but it's also a lot easier to be caught off guard. <laughs> true. Very true. Uh, two last stream labs, Laura, and then we'll wrap this thing up here. Deflated sure. Brady said my favorite part of twin sons is when mom um, mall in Kenobi's arms uh, asks, is he, is he the chosen one? And Kenobi says, yes. Yeah. Uh, Twin Sons is my favorite episode of the whole series. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite episode of the whole series? I love Jedi Knight. Jedi Knight gave oh, okay. me all the feels. It was so sad. Kanan Jarrus is like one of my favorite characters. And to see uh, him go down the way that he did. Um, but there's also, you know, like the 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 sort of preparation um, right. that went into that. You know, the the rescue, rescuing Hera and, you know, Kanan getting ready in the cave and yeah. cutting his hair. And like leaving all of it laid out and just the music that's playing over those scenes, like all of that, sh that episode is just fantastic. And it just was so incredibly moving, I think. Um, so that's, that's my favorite one. Laura was going to cuss and she pulled it back. <laughs> it's my instinct to pull it back. Oh, no, no, no. But not on video. When I was me and Alice talking and just like, nah, bah, 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 bah. and now it's a lot. She's like, all that yeah, stuff. That's great. It's really cool. I feel like every time I do a video thing, people are just like, yeah, could you just like not cuss though? And I'm like, now I'm just in the habit of just fucking not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. All right. Our last one here. Oh, uh, oh, sh oh, people say, all right, guys. All right. Uh, I guess we got a couple more. Sorry, Laura. Uh, okay. Andrew H says, El Senor Sith, LOL. Happy Latino Heritage Month, everyone. A Latino Sith sounds badass. I agree, Andrew Hale. I agree. I'd love to see a Latino Sith. Um, who would play it? Who could go ah, up against Pedro? I wonder who could do that. Uh, may, oh, we a great way to bring Oscar Isaac back. That's for sure. It never happened. but it would <laughs> I'm be. sure he's very excited about the idea of coming back to Star <laughs> yeah, Wars. He definitely he hasn't spoken out about how he never wants to again. <laughs> good point. Good point. Uh, Alan Smith, he donated. Thank you, Alan. He said, thanks again, Laura and John. Love talking Star Wars with the experts, please. I'm no expert. She's the expert. Always remember you are one with the force and the force is with you and never forget. Hello there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Solid. Laura. Or I kicked myself in the butt after our courage episode of not bringing up uh Chirrut Imway in that scene when he walks out there. That is true courage and faith. And maybe if we talk about faith, that'll be the scene we talk about with faith because he is just saying it over and over again as he walks through all those uh, 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 laser blasts or whatever it is that they're shooting at him uh, and, and, and uh, you know, opens the thing with the shield. So, yeah. Yeah. Dear, that's a good point. It's weird that we didn't bring that up, but yeah, the, it would be a good topic to bring up in terms of faith because mm -hmm. then you could also bring in Bayes Malbus and how he's sort of like, you know, the counter yeah. to that through most of the film. But yeah, right. that would be an interesting discussion. I agree. I tear up every time when both of them uh, die in the movie. Ah, oh, oh, gets so, so emotional. Okay. Right? Dude, oh my god, you should listen to that scene in the audiobook or read the like that scene. Oh no. my god, it will destroy <laughs> you. It's insane. In it's the insane. audiobook? Oh man. It's so I good. I listened to the Rogue One audiobook. It's like 13 hours long. That book is so big. It's huge. And it's, really? it's it's kind of insane, but the that scene in particular, I remember like I was like sitting at my 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 desk getting ready for work one morning and I was just like I have to turn this off because I am going to be crying while I'm like sitting here trying to put on my eyeliner. I'm like, this is not working. This is not working at all. It's got to go, but oh, it's so man. good. It's so good. Okay. All right. All right. You talk me into it. I'll do it. Uh, and the Tushka donated as well at the end. He says, thank you for joining us live. Laura, true or false. Roka is better live than recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know if he's better of either. I think he's great at both. I don't. Yeah, I I opt okay. out of the question. <laughs> I think that's fair. Uh, yeah, uh, Ben Rayner, one last one. Remember when it was rumored when Benicio del Toro was rumored to be a Sith uh, in uh, Yeah Jedi? Good theory wasted. Benicio del Toro and LJ actually happened. Yeah, true, true. There was true. also a rumor at some point that he was going to be Ezra Bridger, which was. Also ridiculous. So, <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> People ran with it. People ran with it for sure. Um, all right, there we go. Well, thanks everybody for watching this live episode of the Outlaw Nation uh, show. I always appreciate you all stopping by to hang out with us. And I very much appreciate Laura Kelly for taking the time to be our guest tonight and, and uh, going a little bit over. Thank you, Laura, for the time. Uh, please uh, tell people where they can find you and everything you're doing. And did you have a good time? Did you enjoy yourself on the Outlaw Nation show? I had a blast. I was super nervous about doing I'm always super nervous about doing live stuff. I'm not like <laughs> I'm not an improviser. And so I and I always kind of feel that pressure like that's going it, to it's going to be a thing that comes up and all my weaknesses are going to be exposed. So I. <laughs> 
I very much appreciate the kindness that everyone's showed me today. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, John, for having me and for inviting me. Um, my show, is, my other show is Force to is the Force Toast podcast. It's Force Toast Star Wars Happy Hour. Um, you can find that any of the places that you find podcasts. I host that with my friend Alice, where we drink wine and talk about Star Wars, and we swear a lot because I'm nice. not on camera, and so I'm a lot more comfortable just being like "fuck this." <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a lot of fun. So it, go check that out. And then I am on Twitter at shut up underscore Laura. I'm also on Instagram, but I'm considerably more active on Twitter. So come find me there. There we go. Uh, no, we did not talk about Gina Carano, Chris. It wasn't this, it wasn't the space or the atmosphere to do that. So, uh, we just kind of wanted to stay positive and have fun. Oh, uh, F James says Danny Trejo as a Sith Lord. Yeah, sure. I mean, who would cross Danny Trejo for the love of God? He'd be fantastic. And Laura, you were great doing live stuff. And yeah, uh, we talked about it, uh, over the last few weeks, a little bit more, the idea of uh, us uh, doing Jedi away, a live episode of it. Uh, once every month. So I, this was a bit of a dry run. So I hope you had a good time with it. And uh, everyone seemed to be enjoying uh, everything you were saying here. So uh, you know, maybe this convinced you a little bit for a little more to come closer to that possibility. We shall see. Um, all right. You can follow and I'll let Laura go. Laura, yeah, you go on with your night. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thanks so much for taking the time and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, Laura. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. Thanks again, John. All right. Thank you. All right, there we go. That was Laura Kelly here uh, on the show. So much fun to have her uh, uh, being a part of the Outlaw Nation. And uh, yeah, you know, we do Jedi Way every couple of weeks, and we'll do and we do these uh, one-off shows. Ooh, let me uh, turn the camera down. And uh, we do these uh, one-off shows where we talk about uh, you know stuff that's going on. We talk about the John Boyega stuff. I'm sure we want to talk about the Gina Carano stuff, and maybe we will uh, as a special episode. Uh, maybe later on this week we'll record something for that. Uh, but we did talk about our Mandalorian uh, uh, season two feelings. I'm uh, oh, sorry, the Mandalorian season two trailer, our feelings about that. So I may clip that out of this uh, uh, episode, just lay down the new, the uh, lay down the Jedi way graphic and then put it back up for people to watch as a special episode for the Jedi way. So my, that might happen as well. So um, I thank you all so much for taking the time. And I thank you all for the stream labs, the super chats, a really good night tonight. I appreciate you all donating and helping keep the lights on here in the outlaw nation channel and on the outlaw nation show for sure. Uh, please follow, Follow Laura at everything she mentioned and everywhere she's at. Go give her some love. And for those of you who watched it or watch it later, uh, please tweet at her and tell her how much you enjoyed her on the show. I always pride myself that my fans tweet at the people who've been guests on the Outlaw Nation show and tell them how much they enjoyed them being on and taking the time. And I've had many people who are guests on the show reach out to me later and tell, tell me how much they appreciated uh, those uh, you guys reaching out to them and giving them such positive words. So we're creating a positive community here in the Outlaw Nation, a uh, positive, supportive community for everybody who takes the time to come and be a part of it. So thank you all for being such an essential part of it. Uh, remember, if you want to follow me uh, you, on all social media, it's right there down below, at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to become a part of the Patreon, it's right there, patreon.com slash John Roca. You can see all the multiple tiers we've got going on there to be a part of. we got the Hangouts uh, going on now tomorrow. There'll be a, a, a disc a hangout in the Discord for about an hour, hour and a half. And then on Friday, we'll do our on-camera one for Zoom uh, and hang out and have a good time there as well. And uh, uh, don't forget to share this video as well on your social media, because if you share it, you're telling your friends and family that you support this channel and you support this show, and maybe they'll take a chance on it because they trust your judgment and watch and come aboard the Outlaw Nation show train or come aboard the Outlaw Nation show uh, overall and uh, and and be another member, be another viewer or listener to the show and have a good time. Uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow. What do we got going on tomorrow? Tomorrow we're gonna drop a new episode of the Geek Buddies. Uh, that'll be out for you all to uh, listen to. Don't forget the top ten show dropped this morning. Uh, we talked about uh, the top ten non superhero comic book movies that is out there. You can watch it on the YouTube channel or listen to it wherever you download podcasts. Uh, don't forget uh, we dropped a new uh, a review on the Outlaw Nation channel. I'm trying to do more reviews. Uh, my geek buddy Shannon McClung uh, joined me and we talked about episodes four through seven of Ted Lasso, which is up there if you want to watch on Apple TV Plus. Uh, don't all don't forget also that uh, this is happening. We are dropping that uh, uh, Rocky Trivia Championship between me and Christian Harloff September 18th, this Friday for the $10 above patrons, then a week later for the $5 and above patrons, and then a week after that uh, for all the patrons to enjoy and have fun. It's a hell of a match. It's a hell of a match. No spoilers. It's a hell of a match. That's what I'll tell you. So thank you all so much for supporting everything we've got going on here on the Outlaw Nation. Don't forget Implied Truths live at 7 p.m. 
a lot of craziness going on in the world of politics. So we're going to try to cover it all live 7 p.m. on Thursday night, me and uh, Adriana Arellano. All right. Take care, everybody. Have yourselves a great rest of your evening. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, next week with another brand new live episode of the Outlaw Nation show. And I'm trying to get Winston Marshall to be my guest. I'll let you know soon if that happens. All right. Be well. Take care. And in honor of Laura Kelly, may the force be with you. Be well. Oh, one last thing. What do I tell you every time at the end of every one of these shows? Whatever you need to do to get through the next second, next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, next year. Please find your way to do that. I love and support all of you who love and support me. And I'd like you to keep being a part of the Outlaw Nation uh, for a lot of years. So do whatever you need to do to get through the tough moments, get through the tough times. So many people suffer nowadays. So many people trying to figure it out, take it day by day. Please do something positive for yourself to get you through the tough moments, whether it's meditation, listening to some music, do some breathing exercises, breathing all the way to the top, holding it for about three seconds and letting it go and holding it for three seconds. You'd be surprised how quickly you can level out if you start to adjust your breathing a little bit when you're having those panic attacks or having those moments of depression or anxiety attacks that can help you. Or maybe go take a walk or take a hike uh, or spend some time on the phone with a friend uh, and ask them for help. Uh, you know, we're all, we all want to help each other. We all know how tough it is out there. Uh, and so we all want to be there for each other. So please be there for each other and reach out for help. Please don't be afraid to reach out for help. Uh, we all want to be there. So, all right, that's it. Thank you all so much. I love you. And we'll talk to you next week on another brand new episode of the Outlaw Nation show. Mm -hmm.